What's happening, guys? Just before we start this week's episode, I want to let you know, if you love this podcast and you want more of it, you can get an extra episode every single week exclusively on patreon.com slash haveawordpod. If you don't know what Patreon is, it's basically a way for you to financially support this podcast whilst also getting some benefits for yourself in return. You can sign up for three quid a month, five quid a month, ten quid a month, and obviously the more money you give, the more benefits you get. But even if you just sign up for that three quid a month, which is the price of a fancy coffee or a pint in a ship boozer, you get an extra episode every single week exclusive no one else gets to see it apart from the patreons and you also get 24 to 48 hours early access to the public episodes as well that's what you get and on top of all of that you get access to the entire back catalog of the patreon episodes we've been doing that for like a year now there's loads of content there there's also the two lockdown lock-ins we did in this room where we got dead drunk they only go on Patreon. The ones we do in the future of them will only go on Patreon. If you support us, you get shitloads of content for us, and you can only get it at patreon.com slash haveawordpod. Go sign up now, pause it here, sign up, and then come back to this episode. It's going to be a belter. It's time for have a word with Adam and Dan. This is the first section. I've started without a plan. <laughs> sound quite nasally. I do. Mm. Yeah. It's not like me. Yeah. Why? Have you got another cold? It's pathetic, and I don't even want to... Ex- I don't know what it is, but I'm trying to ignore it. So just please ignore it. I'm hoping it just goes away. Okay. I'm sick of being weakened. That was sort of our government's plan for the coronavirus initiative, wasn't it? <laughs> it's a political start. We get a bit edgy. <laughs> we'll say what we we do, we're not keen on old Boris Johnson, <laughs> and sometimes we let loose the bloody rap scallion. Adam, uh, comedy's back. Oh, comedy's back. Oh, it's nice. It's good. It's giving me a cold, but it's worth it. I feel like I've never been away. Like I've done six sets this week in three days, and it's just been great. Last night was even better because the first two nights of the week, as some of the what viewers and listeners will know, was Adam Rowan friends, and I hosted and headlined the shows, and there was a lot there. Dan I'm was w- there. I'm one of his friends now. Um, <laughs> and then last night, I just got to do two sets. Didn't have to host as well. Just got to rock on and just do 20 minutes. And last night was particularly fun, especially the late show, because I'm just... <laughs> I said this to you a couple of weeks ago. This break from comedy the security of having this podcast has given me such liberation to be like, I'm literally going to say what would make me laugh. And if it winds some people up. So like, <laughs> I was doing a bit last night about a girl that I fucked who died. Um, and half the room loved it. About a quarter of the room were like, where's he going with this? And a quarter really were like, no. But I really enjoyed that quarter of the room's <laughs> reaction as yeah. well. I was like, yeah, yeah, you're, you're absolutely entitled to go. Nah. That's a great sign, though, if you're doing that as basically new material. Is that a bit of a refurb on a on an old bit? Or? Sort of. Yeah, yeah, but it's so long ago that it is a new bit, really. It's, it's, Wasn't it a tour? It was, Edinburgh show. It, themish. It, it yeah. Was, Edinburgh show, yeah. It was the closing routine of an Edinburgh show that not many people saw. And is also, what, four or five years ago? Yeah. So it's it's basically new, isn't it? Yeah, because like, the people who are now fans of mine will have never seen it. Um, I've got a bit like that from the 2018 show about why it's smart to be a Christian that I thought was a really good bit. And again, played to 55 people a night, did a few previews. That might come back because it's not something I hawked around the circuit for a year and a half, polished, everyone saw it. It's just a bit that, you know, was decent in that Edinburgh show. That's basically, if I brought that back now, that would be like new material, like your bit. But if only a qu- if half the room loved it on a new bit, basically, oh, like that's that, a great return, isn't it? That's, that's that bit now. I haven't done it six times. Is is not done, but like I could do that on tour and not change it, and it'd be fine. Like already, because yeah. it just works. And it the, the way I open the routine, it seems I'm not going to ruin it in case people are coming this week or to the tour or whenever, but. It, it's so ju- it's in the middle of a route in the middle of like the bit about COVID, the small bit that I've put together about that, and the opening lines of this routine looks like I'm just doing a hard left, and by the end of the joke you realise I'm not. I'm just fucking around with the audience's emotions, and 
it, it's, it's the best it, bits. Oh, it's just, it's been so the good. swear. Do you remember the my swear on your life bit? Yeah, which was my f- one of my favorite bits of stand up ever. When I came back from the stag do and my sister made me swear swear on my life that they did we didn't go to strippers. Mm-hmm. It's like swear on your life, swear on Laura's life, swear on your daughter's life. And it made the crowd be, they were all with me like, ah, you, you, would you swear on your own life? Ah, would you swear on your wife's life? Whoa. And then I was like, swear on your daughter's life. And they were like, Dan, come on, wait, hey, hey, <laughs> I know it's a comedy club. We don't swear on children's lives. And I love fucking with them on that because that's good stand up, isn't it? It isn't all like, do you remember this? Have you done this? Sometimes it's fucking around with the ethics and the morals of a, yeah. of a social situation. And when you get that push and pull, especially with a new bit, you're like, I'll learn how far I can pull that and I'll, I'll work out when I need to push it. Mm-hmm. But in that early stage, if you're getting that reaction, that's going to be a, that's going to be a, a belter, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And plus you've got 43 sets between now and Saturday. So you should, <laughs> got, should basically have an Edinburgh show by Sunday morning. So congratulations, I've, all the I've gigs in the world.com. I've got sets this week, yeah. I've got two Fucking tonight, <laughs> four tomorrow and three on Saturday. So I wrote a, a 15 minute set of new material with a couple of bits. And on Monday, I was slagging off my family. I was slagging off you. I was slagging off the government. I was like, why am I getting stressed? It's because I was getting stressed because I haven't done a set since October the 31st. And then I'm trying to do new material. And I did something that I've not done for years. I wrote it out verbatim. Just, I I was like, I need to do this because I feel so out of practice. I didn't want to get up there and be like, oh, bloody COVID. So I was like, I'm actually writing it now. I didn't then like, like I think a lot of new comics treat it almost like a monologue, like they're an actor and they write it out. And you can see it at Beat the Frog or New Comedy Nights when someone's performing the script that they've yeah. written and you're like, this is an actor doing comedy, which is fine. It's what, how I started, And you really. can really tell when uh, when they're doing that, when they get a laugh when they weren't expecting to and it throws the rhythm off. <laughs> and they go, <laughs> yeah. do you know what I mean? They're yeah, like, yeah. Well, I, 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 wait, no, <laughs> no. No, no laughter there, please. But it, you it, laugh when I take a breath. It helped and then me they don't get laugh it in. <laughs> yeah, it helped me get. And obviously, with experience, you are just used to the laughs or the lack of laugh. Like it's funny because the thing that that put me off on Monday is I got the end of a, re- a bit that I'd really made longer than it needed to be, and it's actually I think it's got legs. I shortened it down for Tuesday, and at the end I just got to the end of it, and I had managed to build up to lovely jams as a punchline, oh, so and funny. the crowd went, <laughs> "What?" and I <laughs> and I laughed because just four hours before I'd written that down and gone, well, "That will smash." <laughs> Tell you what about Dan. He he's one of the best preserve punchline comedians on the that circuit. Was... It actually put me off that no one laughed. At, well, like you it's know... so funny. I was like, of course they didn't laugh. It was a jam punchline. You fucking idiot. I I was watching you do that, and so without ruining the routine for people watching, it was like a, a, a getting suggestions for stuff you might want to buy. A bit wasn't it? And it was. It's about targeted marketing online, but and you're like some lovely life. jam, and then. I seen you take a, a pause and it, you then revealed on stage the reason for that pause was you were like, that's going to be the applause break. And it wasn't. It looked to me like you'd ran out of things to list. <laughs> it looked like I was like, Dan was meant to do a fifth thing there and he can't think of another thing. It's so funny when you come up with a, a, a with new material, you come up with it and then you go, I think this is the point I'm making. This is the sort of, this is the funny in it. And then to get there, you need the sort of detail and the frills to explain the point. And that that example of like, you wouldn't have a shop assistant if it would be unhelpful if it was just random things. And I sat there on, I was like, right, random things. <laughs> and if you ever need an example of the blank canvas being too daunting, <laughs> it's in a bit going, right, you need to have a shop assistant suggest random things that aren't helpful. And I went, Oh fuck! Uh, I just I was like, Ugh. all the things in the world done. Think of a thing, <laughs> and nearly text Laura went. Think of a thing. <laughs> I was like, can I put this on Facebook? I'm trying to think of things that you could possibly get in a shop. And you know what? The first thing that came to me was women's flip flops. I was like, yeah, that's going in. Oh, fucking, that's good. Women's flip flops is absolute gold. So it's the the process. 
is always nervy with new material, isn't it? But it was just heightened by the fact that I just wasn't match fit. I what it, it that's how it felt. It like within a few minutes of that first gig, I was having such a good time. And a shout out, we did it on the Patreon episode on Wednesday, like Bex and Katie Brad and all of the people that we see on Twitter at Have a Word Pod, just interacting all the time. And like indie clone, like loads of people who I've seen the avatars of, I've seen their like yeah. profile pictures that aren't their faces. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, they were like tweeting and everything. And it, I was a bit rusty and still had fun, but their energy just made up for it. And then by Tuesday, I was like, oh, that was sharper. I like I'd sharpened it up a bit. I wonder if in a few months we'll start getting like really nasty heckles and we'll be like, oh my God. You're the guy with the great British flag and the bulldog in your chair. <laughs> Are you the uh, LGBTQ plus flag with the Anfield, the, the Liverpool FC emblem on it? Like, <laughs> so, it's so random. Um, yeah, I just, uh, it was so weird. Like, I got most of the new bits out and then I, there's one bit that I just bottled. But I, I, I tell you what I did do, and, and this is a classic sign that I've not got my foot in. I purposely put in a bit of interaction in the new material, which when you're up and running, you, I don't think I'd do. I think I'd be like, this is my bit and I need to bloody do it. But it actually makes it more playful. That stuff about people being cunty and, and writing one-star reviews. Just asking who's written a one-star review. I was basically just trying to fluff it up a little bit and it ended up being two of the most fun bits of the set on Tuesday and Wednesday. Um Oh, it's just, yeah, I'm literally buzzing off the fact that I just got to fuck around and do the interaction. Yeah, that was the, fun, wasn't it? Just the messing about again. The crowd work was, I enjoyed that even more than I ever remember sort of enjoying it. Because I don't normally like comparing, and I know it's not proper comparing when it's your show. But, yeah, I enjoyed that quite a bit. And remember a while back I said to you, I need a story. I need a story yeah. on stage. Uh, well, I've got the first half of one. Because... You know, me and Sam went glamping last weekend to yeah. a tent with no electricity. Well, I told the story of that, and it's going to be really good, but at the minute, it really stops in the middle. <laughs> That's, yeah. That's like, I good. told the story, and then was like, and, uh, yeah, we'll have an ending for that in a few weeks. <laughs> yeah. That's absolutely valid. Everyone was warned if they bought tickets for those first few shows that it would be a little bit rough and oh, things I'm wouldn't gonna, be finished. Like, I'm doing this all week. I'm going to be doing... Like the same sort of thing on Saturday night. Yeah, but it, it's amazing because I was rusty on Monday. Last night I did that set. I was like, that was so much more like me. Like took two gigs and on the third one, and I've been a bit tired this week. It's been a little bit full on, but it's been absolutely worth it. And then by the third, I mean, you're like already six, seven, eight gigs in, aren't you? No, you're six gigs in. By the time you hit Friday. So, you know, so uh, I do Show Me The Sample. If you've not had a watch of Show Me The Sample, at Show Me The Sample on Twitter and on socials, it's me and my DJ mate, and it's over Zoom, and he basically plays tunes, and he's been doing DJing as long as I've done comedy, and he breaks everything down. He's also a fan of the podcast, and he, he's he been really interested in like going me going back to work and because it's been happening at the same time as him going back to work. And he was like, how was it? And I was like, yeah, I felt a bit rusty. And there's a couple of points when I just couldn't remember what I was trying to do. I was trying to do a lot with the new material. But I was like, the bits with the crowd and the interacting with the crowd, I was sharp, like lightning sharp. And he went, of course you fucking were. And he said it a few weeks ago. He was like, you've just spent a year and a half Doing with one of the best comics in the country and Carl and Finn and everyone just waiting to react and do... And, and that... Part of my skill set is it more. sharp. Maybe that's why I enjoyed the crowd work more. Yeah. I've been practicing having conversations I'm for gutted a year. as well. I spoke to Binti because I asked, could both nights be recorded so I could get the crowd work out? And he didn't record the first part of yesterday's show where there was a guy on the front row who told me he had a black dad oh, and lad. he looked whiter than you. <laughs> Did you see that, Dan? Had you gone by then? No, I'd gone. I wasn't, yeah, I'd missed it. He's Just, been lied to him. Yeah. He was the most Caucasian man. He was man. just a scouse lad. He looked like me and him. Yeah. And I was like, have you ever asked? Have you ever asked your mum and your dad? And he's like, yeah, I've asked them both. And they, you know, they just palm me off. They go, yeah, I'm your dad. Eat your, <laughs> eat your fucking frosties, kids. Yeah. <laughs> You're mixed race. Uh, no one thinks I am. But you know when, like, it, it's, it's a weird age for comedy. Because, like, 10 years ago, if you were comparing at a comedy club, like I was there, you, like, I can go to you, oh, this happened last night and it's great. And now... 
when that while it was happening, and especially when I did a call back to it in the second half, when there was a guy who was like, "I'm a musician," and I was like, "What do you play?" He said, "I play the recorder," and I said, "You're as much of a musician as his dad is black." Yeah. And massive laugh at in my head. I was like, "That's a clip." I've not burnt any material. That's going to be a really good viral clip. We'll do a million views with that. It'll sell some tour tickets. And I was thinking it on stage as it was happening. And then Binti went, uh, by the way, yesterday, the first section, the cameras weren't on. But we got the rest of it. And I was like, oh, so you... Where is your OCD show manager when you need him? Come on, Binti. show manager. It was his first night. Oh, I thought, I thought Binti ran it, really. Oh, Binti does run the cameras. But yeah, uh, there, there, was a, there was a problem, apparently. But so annoying when... In this day and age, when you do a fire bit of crowd work, and then you're like, "Oh yeah, we didn't get that bit," but we got the, all the other stuff that wasn't as good. If you want that, that's the thing with the with all the people that came on Monday. It's the first time I've been in Liverpool. Got asked for like photos outside. Someone just recognised me round the corner. You're like, "Oh yeah, comedy circuit comedy is different for me because I've got a tour coming up at the end of the next year that hopefully we're going to announce soon. Everything's going to that, and I want people that listen to this to not have seen all of that when they come and see the tour show whereas before I was just doing comedy to be good maybe getting ready for an Edinburgh but I just wanted to be a good comic now I'm like I, I said to Binti last night none of this is going on on hot water is it and he was like oh yeah uh, no 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 I'm, I can't have hot water stick clips of my material up no they won't it's gonna yes, burn it it's gonna burn the stuff mm. yeah, yeah, yeah I sometimes think about beat the frog the best I've ever been as a compare is at beat the frog when it was cooking one of the reasons I don't really want to do Beat the Frog as much anymore, and I think it's coming to the end, is not because I can't do it compared to other comics. I can't do it as well as I used to do it. And it's that makes me sad that the 29-year-old me was better at Beat the Frog than the 40-year-old me. But you're and still I, like the Lionel Messi of Beat the Frog. You're still the best. You're just not as good as Lionel Messi was for I, years it, ago. That, but I, it, it's <laughs> weird because everything looks the same. But you can him at your own ghost. Yeah, like on Super Mario Kart. Yeah. You're like, oh, look, cunt. <laughs> and, but if I think Getting laughed by your own ghost on Mario Kart, <laughs> oh, brutal! I used to love playing the ghost. Um, how the fuck did I do that? You did it about forty minutes ago. <laughs> I I wish it had all been recorded because there was some moments where if if the frog had, had been the one that worked out the cameras 10 years ago, which would have been way ahead of the game. And now we've said this before, like a lot of comedy clubs are like, we could stick on some bloody social media <laughs> clips and hope they go viral. You know, <laughs> we get the industry. It's a little viral joke. Everyone. All right, thanks. thanks. <laughs> turns out, viral. turns out. Because it's pronounced I'm, viral. Yeah, and so they don't understand that. Well, like if you weren't, like totally accustomed with the English language, you could see that written down and you could go, is, yeah. that, is that viral? Yeah, but if you knew the industry and you knew social media clips, you know it's viral. And that's the joke I was making. Okay, so <laughs> watch out, Boris Johnson. Because they don't. They don't know the industry. They don't know. A lot of them don't. Yeah. Which is why they don't, I haven't had cameras yet. And a lot oh, of people. Oh. Yeah. yeah it's, fucking hell. You get it, Carl? Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's yeah. That, Sorry. <laughs> you're just going to keep up with you got, <laughs> No, I've just, got, I've just you got, you got it. it. You've got to keep up with me sometimes. <laughs> I'm pretty good. <laughs> A lot of people say you shouldn't need to explain jokes, but I think sometimes you should, you know, to make oh, sure everyone gets it. And just on another thing, you just reminded me of something. Um, at the minute... I don't got bored of that. No, but we've <laughs> we've been going out to a few bars after the shows, right? Meeting some minute, bloody guys. What? You've, you Even at, like, the clubs where the music's on, you've got to stay at your table, right? You can't get up and dance. So, turns out... Yeah, the hand after dance. After all, the Adam Rowe dance. We were doing it today. This isn't the only COVID-safe dance. What, in the game, maybe what, Adam moving the hot water around the bath. Been... <laughs> Adam, you should start a, t a seated dance class. Yes, yes. Ready? Yeah. So we got this one. Yeah, that's the the clap and move, innit? Yeah, the clap and move. Yeah. yeah. You're good. <laughs> this would be this would be really good if like you're in a wheelchair or something. It would be. Yeah. That's a, yeah. They are welcome. Yeah. All are welcome. Nice. Um, Lovely. The... The Draymond. Oh, I yeah. love it. The Draymond, yeah. Beautiful. The Ja Rule. Sorry. No, that's the Kobe. Oh. That's yeah. Ja Rule. Yeah. Yeah. And you're out. So not a long class. No, you've got the arm waves. Oh, you got. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Carl, are you teaching the class or is Adam? I'm Come as, on. I'm his co presenter. Co host. Co presenter. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> got the John. <laughs> yeah, the John. <laughs> When John walks in, 
<laughs> you got the John. <laughs> got the YMCA is uh, easy. Yeah, the YMCA is still easy. On yeah. point. Yeah, you got the uh, dab it. The dab. Yeah. Ooh. The dab can be dangerous. Now. Yeah. Probably go with one arm. Yeah. Right. You've got the. Um, Hang on, is no. is dab left or right? Finn, you're young. Is it left or right? So you got the I pretend go to wank go while sat you down. You go left. No. No, under the table. It's gonna be no. under the table. Oh, that's not part of the dance class, is it? Why well, have you done that for longer than? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know what I'm doing here. Got the nipple, got the nipple rub. Ooh. Right. Is this towards the end when you turn yourself on? <laughs> yeah. Right. The spaff in your face. The Spider Man. <laughs> the pervy Spider Man. <laughs> Get on that. Uh, uh, lots of moves for everyone to enjoy. Lo- but yeah. All are welcome. Yeah, it's just because Carl did this before, so I was like, oh, I, I thought, you know, because I got a lot of shit off you two a couple of weeks ago, and it turns out, after all, that I'm the only dancer in the country who can currently comply with uh, social distancing guidelines. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, DJ Felix Leiter says that uh, the, the, uh, the pubs are like, nah, I don't worry about it. As long as you're not, like, doing a conga, they're like, ah, you're fine. <laughs> Where, the boat. Whereas be, before, before at Christmas, bouncers because there is a change in the atmosphere now, where and that's great. Where I hope, like the more the people, I'm sure there are people who are like, I'm still vulnerable, I'm shielded, that's fine. But I don't get that sense of Twitter. Like last year, it was very like, I'm shielded. Why are you going out? You could kill me. I'm my nana on your nana. Now that's gone a bit, hasn't it? The vaccinations and also I think people are just fucked off with it. He said before Christmas when you were, de- he walked off on a DJ set. Because the bouncer came over and went, if I have to tell you one more time, keep the volume down, please. What? He, literally the third time he got told. And he had the volume, at, he said, like halfway. It was everyone could chat. But they were so touchy about like the COVID compliance officers coming in and shutting them down. And the bouncers just had no one to fight because everyone was sat down. And there's, there's no kickoff <laughs> if everyone sat down. So they were just being like, little, like, like fucking primary school teachers. Like, fingers on lips. Hold on, uh, sit down. Where are you going? What the fuck does volume spread the COVID virus? Because it makes people talk louder and they were getting really touchy about it. They're like, there should be so that many decibels. That COVID more. Because if I go to you, hey, Carl, do you want a bevy? If I go, hey, Carl, do you want Whoa. a bevy? Yeah. Like, that means... If you spit him, he's done spit. Yeah. So he, got paid a hun- he was getting paid 150 quid to do a sit down fucking nonsense. The bounce came over for the third time and he went, right, if I have to tell you again. And, and he was like, what? What? He was like, well, you just need to keep the volume down. He was like, why don't I just fucking go home then? He went, what? And he just went, actually, bang. Got his bag and did a little walk Good. off. And he said he said that, that everyone's being a bit more chilled out this time. And I think it's because everyone's like, we're nearly there, yeah. aren't we? 99% no. of the vulnerable people are now vaccinated, as in the categories. Yeah. Yeah. So, And if you're out, you're not asked. Like, if yeah. you are out... You, you can't come to a comedy club or a bar and be like, right, I'm making sure everyone is following every rule. Guys, because this is sit still... down, I'm vulnerable. You're like, fuck off. Yeah, go and sit outside on your own. Yeah, so it's not... It, I feel like, you know, the sit-down dancing phenomena, I don't think you've got long to make it work because hopefully we're going to be stood up dancing soon. You know, like how there's some stuff with COVID that might stick around, like QR codes on tables for table service and stuff. Okay. I think, like, my dancers could be what's they. Right. I think, like, stand-up dancing might yeah. be done. I so, reckon next yeah. year's Strictly might just be a lot of people sat down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so many jokes. Yeah, I've got a joke there. Like, yeah, 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 yes, I think that could be good. I honestly can't wait to see Gatecrasher next. Uh, I what's think Gatecrasher? Gatecrasher, big nightclub. Ministry of Sound. Mm-hmm. Just Weeping. go in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And at midnight, just as, yeah, everyone's on the floor. Rock the boat. <laughs> well, I'd like to know. Uh, you got the note. <laughs> that would be unbelievable. Is everyone doing the row, row, row your boat? Adam Rose started this. It's called row. That's why he did it. Fucking like to know. Ah, oh, you lost a bit of got... authority by knocking your headphones off there, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I was really enjoying myself then. Really, pun- really fun. You Very funny. Your eye as well to indicate to Adam. I don't know if you noticed that. What? You went. Yeah, I, he made it. No, I didn't. You did. I d- well, I'd, I 
I didn't do it on purpose. No, you didn't. I didn't yeah, do it on yeah, purpose. Yeah. I don't do the That's eye. Weird. I don't do the eye bants. Yeah. Because anything it means it's subconscious. You've got a subconscious bias, which oh, is like yeah, we're all thinking it. I just like, don't say it. It's like institutional racism, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. You <laughs> you accidentally having a go at my eye is exactly the same as the prejudices built into uh, British society against black and ethnic minorities. It is exactly the same. Same. Go and have a march about it. Yeah, we'll yeah. Do. Just have a sit down, though. <laughs> What's that scouse lad doing? Sat down in front of Parliament. <laughs> he's uh, he's protesting institutionalized racism towards his eye. <laughs> like to know where you got the notion. <laughs> Rock the vote. Who's that with him? Dan Nigel. What's he doing? He's lost authority. <laughs> Proper lost authority. Can't even got headphones on that prick. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but yeah, very, very, very good to be back in the game. Very good. Why are you laughing at now? Is you trying to do a segue? <laughs> Is you just going, it's just like Black Lives Matter. Then we'd be in front of Parliament, like the boa, and then you were like, anyway, very good to be back in the game. <laughs> It's so, it's so often me that's like, anyway, uh, we've got some questions. I was like, yeah, all banter aside, uh, we're, it was excellent to be doing what I love. Do you think Do you think QR codes will stick around? What? Do you think QR codes for service? Yeah, because it's an improvement, isn't it? No, it's not, though, is it? Not socially. That's it's really awful. Mean. We worked in bars to interact with people and stuff. Yeah, no, I don't think it'll be, that's the only way you can order, but I think you'll always be able to order. Oh, right. Yeah, okay, as long as you don't, like, take away, because... I'm going to put QR codes on my tour posters. I think that's uh, yeah. a great shout, isn't it? It is. To give people a scan to book Yeah, tickets. in times of need, the technology isn't half kicking to gear, does it? But I still think you've got so many people that are just going to walk into a place and be like, can I order this, this, and this? Oh, yeah, it's just so fucking better. easy, isn't it? Yeah. Um, what do you reckon is definitely going to stay around? What do you reckon is going to go? I think masks will stay around. In some capacity, I do. I think there'll be some people who are nervous who just wear them now, especially in flu season. A hundred percent. It used to be the occasional Chinese student. Yeah. And you'd be like, fucking hell, we're not in like... You didn't know they were Chinese, did you? you just seen an Asian person and you were like... Because it's... J Japanese people do that as well, don't they? Just saying you might be getting your Asians mixed up. Yeah, there's every chance. I'm not an expert, am I? <laughs> I don't know. I wasn't, I wasn't even trying to be a dick. I'm just playing the numbers. They are, there are more. Play, they're in more. I've got an idea for a really more dangerous game. Oh my God. I was uh, in Shiraz. Yeah, sorry, we'll come back to It's an ultimate uh, fireball. No, I was going to uh, just pay, pick up. I was going to get images of different Asian yeah, people no, on do my that. phone and see if Dan could guess what country they're actually from. Yeah. Well, now we have to play it. Yeah. I was, at, I was in I'll Shiraz. Do it on screen. I'll do it on screen. Okay, yeah. And you can yeah, but you're going to have to hide what your Google search was. Okay, Finn, start saving some pictures. I was in Shiraz. Uh, which is next to hot water, getting yeah. a fire chicken kebab. Fuck me, I wish there was a Shiraz in Chester. And do you remember what we said about Freddie doing like a Mandarin podcast or something random? I can't, we, we, we give Freddie so much shit. I can't remember what's one of his batshit ideas or one of the things that we've made up taking the mickey out of him. Wasn't he going to do like a Chinese comedy night? Or did we tell him, we say he was going to do a Chinese I comedy night? I remember vaguely... And 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 it and you said there was there's loads of Chinese people on Hardman Street. Very, yeah, and Adam was like, whoa, 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 one in five. I found myself counting counting, counting the Asian people on Hardman Street. It was the, like I was going. Did your phone just go off then? Uh, it's my alarm. Stupidly, because oh, I thought you were pulling up a tally chart. <laughs> <laughs> Genuinely, I did as well. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually one in seven point five. <laughs> Actually, one in seven guys. <coughs> but I'm not wrong. Are, it's a very dense Asian population in that end of town. Yeah. I'll say this: if you ever need proof that that uh, the UK is more multicultural than it used to be, that stretch of Harman Street, if you're sat there having a chicken kebab, was basically people. I could tell who was coming to see us, mm -hmm. and everyone else going the other way was either. Oh, it sounds like I'm being a dickhead, but there was it was very international. Yeah, yeah, very it's a, that's, international. That's where all the international and you know, that way, and you know who the homegrown were, homegrowns were, <laughs> fucking skaggets. Yeah, there there's are. not many scouts. <laughs> <in the> town, <laughs> really. It's quite um, yeah, a lot of wolves and a lot of this, Asians. This dangerous game we're about to play is, you know, I, I've spoken about this with someone before because 
<laughs> there's no racial insensitivity to it. It's not that all Asian <laughs> people look the same. It's that you can't. You can if you live there. I you can. I so could. I could show you a picture. No, but I mean, uh, more more so than you, only because I've literally got experience of... I'm, I'm going to nail this. Don't worry about it. Smack it up. Smack it up. We've got four different Asian people. Oh, okay. Ready? Uh, you're going to slide these into the episode as well? Uh, yes. I'm ready. Okay, I'm going to do this. I, I Not could... as fun for the audio listeners, but it will be when we get it wrong. Uh, is, this, is this on? Oh, yeah, I know. Can I've you got see? this one. Okay, 100%. where is this gentleman from? Oh, fuck a dog. So the, it's, it's uh, Asian countries... <sighs> Like, do we have to pick different ones? No, no, if you both agree on the same one. I think he's Japanese. I think he's Japanese. He's Japanese. Yeah. It's so obvious. It's the hair as well. <laughs> so, that well, was a Japanese person, everyone listening on audio. Please stay with us. What about this gentleman? Chinese. Yeah, I think he's Chinese. Finn? Yeah. He's Chinese. Oh! See, it's not hard. What about this gentleman? Is this a different... This is another nationality, yeah. Korean. No. Vietnamese. He's Vietnamese. Oh! <laughs> Rowing bags! Yeah. Koreans have got quite round faces. Woo! He knows that from his first wife. What about this gentleman? Oh, <laughs> I would say that he looks like... I don't know. Malay. I, I don't think know. he looks like he might be Malaysian, but he spent time in Chicago and London as well. Yeah. Oh God, that's quite specific. Um, what would you I'm say not his sure name if his was? Twitter's working, but what yeah, would I say his name so. was. I'm going to give him an old English man's name. No, I think like a lot of people would look at that and say maybe he's a Nigel, but judging by the colour of his t-shirts, I think he might be called Roger, and I think he's older than you think he is. <laughs> What? It's you... Nigel Long, everyone. <laughs> it's Nigel. Long. That, was the, that was the bit. That yeah. was the bit. So what we so were doing there, it was we pretending we didn't know, but we did all along. We knew it was Nigel Long because we smashed mad. that, man. You've just proved yourself wrong, though, haven't you? Yeah, they have. Yeah, sometimes I'm wrong, Cal. But you were right at the same time. Yeah, because Fatten got it wrong. I said, well, Dan. I'd like to know <laughs> if you got the notion. I said Dan wouldn't be able to tell him a pass. I can tell anyone a pass. You can get up a picture of any person. Yeah. And I'll tell you what country. The is. whole thing was I was meant to be, <laughs> I was meant to be guessing, but Adam was like, no, fucking well. fight song. Cut <laughs> <laughs> off. Yeah. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> um. <laughs> okay, for the audio listeners, I'm searching for. Yeah. When's your next set? Oh. It's for not for another week. Is it not? Uh, I've just not put loads in. I've not put loads in. I don't need sympathy, but it's like it, I, I could not be doing the schedule that you're doing. Yeah, because you've got uh, children. It's bad. It's just a babber, man. It's full on. But it's going it, to, yeah, it's nice, a nice schedule. Where's this gentleman from then? Um, He's European. He is. Yeah. Not hard. I would say. Bulgarian. Slovakia. No, Hungarian. Oh. That's what I meant. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. I should have got that as well by his, like, neckline. This is a silly, silly game. <laughs> should have got that by his neckline. You know, you know, he, you've got oh. sartorial clues towards... Yeah, I was too distracted nations. by the goatee. I didn't look at his neck. That's yeah. such clear, so clearly a Hungarian neck. Yeah, because it's thin. You know what I mean? <laughs> That that's was such a shit joke. Yeah, because they're hungry. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Fuck it. Oh. Just having a moment of silence. For what? That that joke. Like, Coming to do it. It doesn't yeah. even deserve a jar rule. At least I'm in a good mood, though, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. You're a grumpy little tired man on Patreon. Oh, so much. <laughs> How's your gigs been going? Yeah, pretty good, man. Don't make me go to podcast in our room. If you're not a Patreon, I don't know what you're waiting for. But uh, on Monday, on the Tuesday's record this week, which I was on Wednesday, we had Alfie Brown sit in as a, a special guest because he was here. Um, and uh, yeah, Dan, 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 Dan was all tired and grumpy. I really, I, I, I wasn't pissed off with anyone. No, you weren't. There was one point when you thought I'd said something quite incendiary, and I was like, "What are we even doing?" I wouldn't say that, and then it got like borderline eggy, but it wasn't genuine egg. 
Like it yeah. wasn't. Do you know, I was listening to a podcast on the way, uh, one of my favorite American podcasts, and they were really in an arsey mood with each other. And I was like, oh, this doesn't work. And I know some people like the chip. They like it like, oh, yeah, they go back and forth and they argue a point just for the sake of it. I find that to be tiresome sometimes. I'm like, I do not not need to listen to people who don't like each other. And it, and it made me go, I feel really bad about Tuesday. <laughs> so I've come in like, like, no, if you got the no. It was just like, because this podcast, as our regular listeners and viewers know, it's just me coming up with constant bullshit and you taking the piss out of me for it and vice versa. And so when one of us is tired, we just really take it seriously. So I was like, I'll ring Laura and tell her you're coming on the night out with us. Because I'll say to her, what if we find a briefcase with six million pounds in? Uh, and then Dan misses out on a cut. And you were like, yeah, but statistically quite unlikely that's going to happen, isn't it? So. Whoa. Way to run with the bet on, Dan. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. I've got the banter here. Uh, that's not going to happen, is it? So, <laughs> end of pod. <laughs> we were saying it. We were laughing about it last night. It is when people ask for advice. Sometimes it's very tempting to get to it and go, "Yeah, he's a cunt. Fuck him off." <laughs> Next question, like, not really what we're trying to do. Oh, this is going to be a fun one today. Uh, should we have a little break? Yeah, do let's let's do that. Okay. Yeah. What's happening, guys? Are you on board the CBD oil train yet? Whether you are or you aren't, you should head to supremecbd.uk, one of the official sponsors of the Have Away podcast, and get yourself some premium CBD oil product from gummy bears to the oil itself. This stuff has got a million uses. It can help with anxiety. It can help you sleep. It can help with aches and pains. It's really, really brilliant. It's been helping me and a lot of other people. Now, if you go to supremecbd.uk and use the special promo code, code WORD, that's W-O-R-D, you get 30% off every and you order, and they slide us a little bit of money for sending you their way. That's how sponsorship works. They sponsor the podcast. We push you their way. It's a money game, baby, but you're going to get money off your CBD. And what's better than money off? Nothing. Go get it. SupremeCBD.UK. So I know you've prepped some questions. Uh, our, today's guest, as the listeners will know, because it'll be in the title, is uh, Jeff Norcott. And I posted on Patreon before and asked for some questions for Jeff. And there's one that one of our OGs, Sharni, has sent in. I love Sharni. That I just think might be a bit better if we just do it without the guest. So, Dan, if you were on Naked Attraction, right? So let's say Laura's gone, right? Gone. Gone away. She's just broke up with you. And moved a bit down the road because it's easier for childcare. Because she doesn't want to be too far away. Because, you know, she knows you love the kids. So she's staying close so that you can mind the kids sometimes. She can mind the kids sometimes. It's just easier for everyone. You've had a breakup, but she's not gone too far. Is it easier? So How far? I mean, story, she can't be on the same road. No. She's... You know, there's a divorce couple on our road. And so... they live across the way from each other. And it, obviously it's easier for their kid. But you're like, oh, could you imagine... If someone over last night, like, oh, because you've fucking seen from your bedroom window. No, you got to be at least two postcode that. numbers away. If you're in, like, right. L12, like we are, you got to be in L14 right. or L10. All right. Rapid L12. Um, L14, what, what? There you go. Um, so if you were on Naked Attraction, first of all, would you ever go on that show? <laughs> what if Laura's gone? Laura's gone. Do you know, on Monday, when you said Laura's gone, it got such a big laugh. At the it comedy club freaked me out. <laughs> it was like ninety eight percent have a word, listeners. And then I went on and just told them it was mental that just saying Laura's gone, and it was like they were like, "Hey, again!" And I told Laura, and she found it really funny. The reason Laura and I will stay married is because she finds the idea of a load of strangers thinking it's funny that she divorces me and fucks off hilarious. Um, uh, and then Paul Smith went. I got a weird phone call from my ex. She rang up and went, is everything all right with Dan and Laura? Apparently they sleep separately. A bit worried about them. <laughs> like, one, I thought we dealt with the whole uh, we sleep separately. It's fine. But I love that Paul Smith's ex is like, yeah, I know we've had a tricky uh, f few years, Paul, but I really need to know what Dan and Laura are doing in terms <laughs> of sleeping together. I told Laura, she was like, that's so weird. Um, no, I would not go on Naked Attraction because if, we, if Laura is ever gone, She's gone. If Laura's gone. Yeah. I want to keep Laura. She's in Blaken. Uh, in Blaken? Yeah. Oh, that breaks the rules. Still CH1. She's going to have to go back to Huntington. Where's that? CH3. Yeah. There you go. Um, 
she, I want to keep her sweet, and I think me getting my dick out on ITV or whatever it is is not going to keep her that Channel sweet. Channel four. Oh god! I've never watched it, mate. Lost no, authority there, didn't I? <laughs> um, I've never right. watched it. No, it's quite addictive. It. I know the premise, but I've never, I've never. So they they start with uh, your feet and that, and then they, they is it, anybody ever out after that point? Is it like a yeah? They, they you get voted off at each stage. Oh right, okay. So oh, like, there's, I, there's, I, yeah. There's like four stages. There's five people. So it's like feet, dick, chest, head. And then they and then they talk. They they can. You might get voted out of feet because you've got those well, little like. The question that Shani's asked is: If you were on like, Naked Attraction, would you rather be kicked out for the dick and ball round or for your face? That's <laughs> <laughs> quite obvious. I think it would hurt getting knocked out for your feet, wouldn't it? If like, because he's got like little troll things that like <laughs> cross dressing troll things. Like this troll's been on a date with high heels. Like you're all a bit smudged <laughs> in, aren't you? And I had an ingrown toenail no, out. Adam's not into that. That's my feet like. They just go off at an angle. No, I've seen your feet. You got them out. They all look smushed in. No, like you've been wearing no, high no, heels. No, 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 you, you no the feet do that, mm. but they're also smushed in. No, they're not. They're just like, woo. No, as in the foot. Oh, woo. <laughs> no, they're like this. Woo. Woo. Like that. No, they're not. You I'll, didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> of all the things. I'll get them out again. Get it out. No, 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 please. I don't want to see your feet. He's taking a shit off as you speak. We've already just had like people from around Asia. For the audio listeners, like, what are these guys doing? Trying to lose us. Uh, dick or face. I cannot imagine getting my dick out on national television. How I, I would. So hang on. If you get knocked out for the dick, no one ever sees your face. No, if you get knocked out for your dick, then... So, like, there's five booths, and all you can see is five dicks, right? And then she goes, right, well, we'll get rid of number three because his dick looks shit. And then they reveal all of you, and you come over, have the world's most awkward hug while you're naked and she's not, and then you walk off. Do you hug naked, yeah? Yeah. Oh. That's not COVID safe or sexually safe. Yeah. Um... That gave me a little cringe sort of anxiety, like, ah. I think my dick's better than my face. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I would be like having like half a wank behind the thing waiting for it to come up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a fluff. Half a wank is not the word. Yeah, a self-fluff. A fluff, Oh, yeah. 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 When you need to get I, competitive in the changing room. I'd be like tickling yeah. me gooch. A little helicopter. Just so I'm like half turned on. Oh, no, you can... That that can go wrong, that can't it? Why? I usually just, just do just the helicopter. sort of like... Helicopter. Yeah, a little bit of a vigorous dry with a towel. I've never stimulated my anus. No, I've just been having a little... I've fingered under the ass. <laughs> Yeah. As, the, they, as the thing opens, <laughs> <laughs> they pull, they pull the whole thing up, and I'd just be there going, "Oh me, I'm done." <laughs> there with an erection and a smelly finger. <laughs> She's like, Honestly, his feet don't seem too bad now. <laughs> oh my days! I think I could pass the dick round. Just about. I could pass the dick round. I think losing a few feet. Puff, puff, give, words. motherfucker. Wow. No dick's attractive, is it? Like if you lose it for your face, then it's like you ugly. I could be a penis model. <laughs> I think some dicks are attractive. What would you model? What do you mean? What are you modelling? Uh, like hats for ball dicks. Jewelry. <laughs> ball jewelry. Ball jewelry. Just cock rings. <laughs> Here's Adam now on QVC. <laughs> and we've got a lovely range of cock rings. Absolutely lovely. Here she is. Adam, if you could just do a spin. If you could just do a helicopter for oh, us. Like women get the jazz <laughs> If you phone in now, you can get 10% off the Adam Rowe dick ring. It's absolutely massive. <laughs> it can be used as a hula hoop for your children. <laughs> Colossal. It's for the big lady and the big boy. The Adam Rowe dick ring. <laughs> oh. Can use used as a frisbee for a large dog. No, yeah, but what I'm saying is my dick looks quite good, apart from the scar. Oh, God. You know I mean? God almighty. I have got a scar on my dick. Where is it? On the bottom? Top, no, bottom? it's right up the shaft. Right on up the, the shaft? Top. Like, right up the shaft, yeah. On the top or the bottom? Oh, underneath. Yeah, right. Like the bit that touches your balls. What? Under have his you dick. had open dick surgery? I had a penis reduction. How would it be up the shaft? Because they cut it all up. I don't know. Do they not just, like... Roll it out. 
chop it in the middle and then put it back together. I, I was asleep, thank God, for the oh, surgery. Yeah, that's not a local anaesthetic, you ne- you is it? D- you never want to be awake and just see your dick on the fucking side waiting for it to be attached back on. Or yeah. do you take it yeah, off? Yeah, you never do. That's a fact. <laughs> I didn't know they removed it to do surgery. Yeah, what? yeah. Like in a garage. Yeah. Oh, where are we putting this? <laughs> on the shelf. Where's the, where's the dick? Where? If I, I'm gonna buy a box of dicks and leave them by that phone, did you no mom, one did, needs the dicks. Did your mum come over and do the the cut like the umbilical cord? I don't think Mrs. They let, Rowe. I don't think they let alcoholic women join in a major surgery. I don't think that's like a policy <laughs> in the NHS. All right, love, you had a few babies, have you? Come what, here. Do you want to go? He's my and- baby. <laughs> he's my baby. I'll cut it. Oh, and now he's my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now. <coughs> I, do, I, do, I if I have to get my dick out <laughs> so I want I want to get I really don't want to get my dick out on TV but I suppose once it's out I'd rather be like I'd rather have someone go ah yeah I'm not into that dick because then I don't have to take the judgment of the face oh do you not see the person no you do, you do? no but you, you, uh, you but you're out you on the dick so she doesn't have to pass it. judgment on the you know what I mean right um I would, ne- I, I would, I wouldn't go on the program because I, I think I've got a nice dick, but I'd have to have a massive one to go on it. Do you know Has anyone got a pipe on it? Yeah. Like- oh, yeah. some people have absolute swords. Do they win? Yeah. Not always, mate. If I had a sword, I'd be knocking down the doors of Channel Four with my dick to get on. Like, of course, you get your dick out all the time. I'd be like whipping it out and about it out. Show, on pod. Have more. you heard the rumors that John Barrowman used to helicopter his dick on Doctor Who? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when they were filming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's on yeah. it's on NFL.com. It's what I follow. <laughs> they've, they've really been covering it a lot. Yeah, so... No. You know when uh, Noel, whatever, is, is it Noel Clark? Noel Clark, yeah. He got uh, Me Too a couple of weeks ago, didn't he? He's been outed as a bit of a pest. But he also Me Too John Barrowman, didn't he? Yeah. So he, like... It's, what? He did what? He Me Too John Barrowman. Yeah, he was like, if I'm going down, I'm taking Barrowman with me. There's an old clip. Have you seen the old clip? Yeah. Yeah, um, when he's like... Like yeah. Gandalf, when he's falling, and all of a sudden, like, <laughs> you're yeah. coming as well. Yeah. You're a cunt. But they're all laughing. He's on, like, this, like, Radio 4 panel talking about his time on Doctor Who. And he's like, yeah, and Badderman's there with his dick out, helicoptering it round, and, like, everyone's laughing, like, oh, fucking John, yeah, he loves getting his dick out. Like, the makeup artist saying, yeah, he just put it on my shoulder. And then Noel Clark says it's fine because he's gay. And everyone's like, what? Yeah. And it's not fine because he's gay, but there has been a time where that has been the attitude. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's threatening towards women. Because it's not threatening it? towards women because yeah. that dick doesn't want to be in you. That's what, like, he's talking about. I don't agree with it, but that's what... That, that, yeah. That's, that's what Things have changed now. There's a, yeah. there's a no dicks policy in most workplaces. Yeah. yeah. You've got to ask. There is a, a different set of rules for... Can I put my dick on your shoulder? <laughs> Excuse me. I don't want to fuck you. So, you know, don't worry. Cat. Don't panic. Kath got a question. I just want to humorously just pop, know, your, pop your Tupperware sh- to the side. Have you finished your pasta? <laughs> All right. Got he a must question have a for pipe you. There, mustn't he? Yeah. To get it on a shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm five foot eight and I've got a small dick and I might not be able to reach her shoulder. I know they sat down, but still to like. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'd be tall. Kath, is that an office chair? Can I just press that? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Bit of banter. What's this? <laughs> hey! Go ahead, John. Oh, help yourself. <laughs> to me shoulder. <laughs> oh, imagine how fucking annoying that. You know, like for me, for me, right? The first three times that I entered my dressing room and John Barman was there with his dick out would be hilarious. I'd be like, fucking hell, John. Four, five, six. You'd be like, John, put your dick away. The tenth time he's got his dick out. While you're trying to read your lines for Doctor Who. Yeah. You'd just be like, John, mate, come on. Yeah. It's quite in the cat. It's a, it's, it's, he's not a newbie or anything. He's John Barrett. He's been there for the, like, he's a big deal, isn't he? So everyone's like, oh, I've got to put up with his dick because he's like, he's well in with the director and the, oh, that's horrible. What is the deal with like gay guys getting away with fucking murder? It's like the same with stand up, isn't it? Like I will fuck the shit out of you. Yeah. And the first comedian, like if you ever dared as a str- this isn't like just like post me too. This is forever ever. 
Like, like as a straight guy, you could never go to a young girl in the audience. I find it really creepy when older comics are like, oh, yeah, fucking, yeah, fit. Like, ugh, horrible. But if you're gay, it's like, <laughs> a young boy, I can threaten sexual misconduct. And that's banter. It is a weird little, like, wrinkle in stand-up, isn't it? That it's, that's fine because it's gay banter. Yeah. Yeah, I think it'll when no one joins in after you've made a point like that, it just looks like you've got a problem with the gays. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, as soon as I finished saying it, I was like, yeah, I can see why Adam's not running with that one. That's fair enough. <laughs> it'll catch you. It's gay hack. Yeah, it's gay hack. Yeah, to be like, oh, things I do to you. I would rather be kicked out uh, for me dick because I think the face is an insult. Yeah. And me dick, I'd be like, do you know what? It's a dead good dick. If anything, you're missing out. Do you know what I mean? I know it's a good dick, so you're fucked. Do you get to have a say when you get kicked out? Uh, they'll go like, hey, this is Lucy. What, uh, how do you feel about getting kicked out? Like, yeah, obviously disappointed, but, uh, you know. But I have got day. a massive biff, so it's understandable. <laughs> yeah. I fill most of the box with my biff. Is the girls, my mum said I should have shaved it. Is the girl's fanny boobs face, feet? Do no, they get more so, sections? It, so if when when there's uh, assuming the people on the show are straight, the 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 person on the show is fully clothed while everyone else is revealed, and then right at the end they just go and come back out completely naked. So let's say you were on it and there was six women. Yeah, you reveal all the way up to the you, the two women you want yeah. are left, and you've you've heard them talk and everything, and then you go to the changing room and come out completely naked and then you go, eh, that one. And you go on a date. So everyone's really just bollock yeah. yeah. And there's been a lot of marriages from it, hasn't it? Because it's a really solid way of starting relationships. That's yeah. a fact. Yeah. So I'm a boob man, me. So. Yeah. More than a bum man. Okay. Bum man, me. Yeah. Not I, asked about I, your biff or your tit. <laughs> your biff or your ass. <laughs> I'd love it. You're a boob man. I'm a boob I man. I know yeah. that. All right, fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. Boobies. Um, so there's my answer. <laughs> what if a girl saw your dick and was like, oh, God, oh, I'm only one woman. She just got intimidated by it. What I'd if you like, got voted off? It looks phenomenal. I'd be like, listen, love, people have been scared before, but trust me, you'll stretch. <laughs> if your fanny can't take oh, it. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> I wish I'd started talking now. <laughs> If your fanny can't take it, your bum hole will. There you, know you go. I mean? There you go. She knows what you mean, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> no subtlety there, lad. Fucking... Do you know what I mean? Old Jimmy innuendo here. What does he mean? I will fuck you in the bottom. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, Adam, I've got a clue. I have got a clue. I've got an inkling. I will penetrate your asshole with my erect penis. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 Following on on the uh, TV thing, uh, Matt Landry. Matt Landry. Matt Landry. Matt Landry. Matt Landry. Matt Landry. That's two in a week for Matt. Matt fucking Landry. One of the best quarterbacks playing in the NCAA. Um, Big Brother, he says, who do you think would win Big Brother out of you and the other comics that have been on the couch? If we all did a big brother together, the have a word, <laughs> big bro, who okay. do you think? So is it just us four in it? Or is it us four in a house of 12, like the traditional show? Okay, so there's 12, but we're using other guests from the... the... Okay, so I think in that situation, I think out of us, I'd get the furthest. <laughs> Adam, what? Adam, I've disagreed with you in many different ways on this show since its start. <laughs> and I am telling you right now, I'm going to disagree with you more on that than anything you've ever said. Yeah. You would be one of the first people voted out. No. No, so, it wouldn't be for the re for the uh, for that reason. Cuz you want knobheads to shake it up. No, here's the thing. Big brother living together, living around people. No, but the the, the public still vote with, them that's out. That's the thing. Here's it's the a public thing. vote at the end of the day. If the public want to gobshite in to mess about. Yeah, well, first of all, oh, that's yeah. true. I but thought the other housemates... No, no, no. no, the other housemates nominate you, but that's what I'm saying. You'd oh, all you be nominated before me. I would. The public wouldn't like me, so I wouldn't win. But I'd get to the final because the housemates would want me in. 
You are a messy, <laughs> lazy bastard. But you are the worst person I, I could imagine to have Big Brother. I have tidied around you in this studio yeah. with you going, two seconds, two seconds, <laughs> two seconds. And you are not arse. You're like, yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> Fucking hell. I'm Jimmy in the end, though. I'll stick my dick in your ass. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I will murder you with your own dirty plates and then nominate you. Look, Adam, like, no, everyone would love me. I am great. I am the best. I am the best. Everybody love. No, you're a grubby fucker. God bless you. I love you. Just look at the shit. In fact, no, there's no shit around you because I tidied it up. So I don't know. I don't know if Adam do well, that I let well. you tidy up because I know you like feeling like you've got something done. That is the arsehole thing to say, in it? I, I give that to you. I want to tidy up as well, but I know you get a lot. That's the equivalent from of, it, from like, being the cleaning lady of this podcast. In Mac, he's going, I'll leave it there because I'm giving a cleaner a job, aren't I? <laughs> or th- yeah, yeah, yeah. Just throwing things out. No, because we're in the city centre. That's why I'm littering. I'm, pe- I'm keeping people in work. That's why I don't take my trolley back. I just push it into a parking bay. <laughs> just let it roll. Yeah. Like Bill Burr. <sighs> yeah. Who do you think, uh, guest-wise, would be the best? Like, who do you think is going to be the most popular? Who do you think would win? If... Um, I think the public are quite... Ha- My initial response was about to be Lauren. But Lauren can be quite emotional, and I think the public can be quite harsh with that, so I think she might... Mm. Um, I think Stephen would do well. Who? Stephen tries. Stephen tries. Maybe, yeah. Do you know, I regret saying that I'd fight Stephen Tries because I saw him stand up and Stephen Tries is sneaky fucking tall and has been working out. I think Stephen would be, yeah, quite good. Steph, Steph Johnson, yeah. I think she's quite... I don't think nah. she'd fuck about Steph. Nah, I yeah, think but she'd I, call it as she saw it and then... I, th- I think she'd end up... The, the inner scouse woman would come out at some point and it would, uh, it, it would cause murder. Yeah. Ishan. Ishan, yeah. Ishan would have a really good chance. Who's the most likable guest we've ever had? Josh. Josh Jones. Jo- yeah, pro- e- yeah. And he's he gay, so he get away with fucking murder. Yeah. E- Josh would win, probably. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> he yeah. didn't get away with murder. Got away with bombing kids, though. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> You get what I'm saying? Adam went, oh, oh, pucey puce. You all right, kid? (laughs) Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, my God. My God, that was so funny. (laughs) (sighs) Can we go and get some lunch? Yeah, let's go and get some food. Oh. Uh, Jeff Norcott in today. He's a <laughs> fucking Tory. <laughs> and, uh, but he's like the soundest one. He's, well, he's getting interrogated, okay? Yeah, he's, yeah. Very, he's very likeable. A lot of Tory bashing, so we thought, you know what? Get him on. He's a good comic. I get on quite well with him. He's uh, a great guy. And uh be quite interesting. We've got some questions in from the Patreons for him. I've got some fucking questions, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Some fucking questions for him. Like, why are you starving children? Why are you personally doing that? Huh. Is he a Tory minister now? <laughs> I don't know. It's like he's been elected. 
All right, see you in a bit, lids. <laughs> hey, listen to this. This podcast, have a word, yeah, is sponsored by beer52.com. And we have been for about a year now. They are our OG sponsor. And I've got to tell you about them. If you don't know who they are, they are the number one craft beer discovery club in the UK. What's a craft beer discovery club, Adam? Well, I'll fucking tell you, mate, okay? What they do is they help you discover craft beer. They send you different craft beers every month from all over the world. Different themes every month as well. You might get a month worth of South African beers. You might get some from Argentina the next month. You might get some from South Korea or something. All over the world, they'll help you discover the best craft beers that you've never heard of. And here's the best thing. Because you're a listener to this podcast, not only do you get a free case of eight beers and an award-winning beer magazine for free just by going to beer52.com slash word. All you do, pay the postage and packaging, eight free beers, free beer magazine, and a little tasty snack as well. And also, it helps us out. You support our sponsors. They support us. This thing can keep going. We can keep the have a weird gravy train on the fucking track. So go to beer52.com slash word right now and get yourself some bevies for nothing. Welcome back to part two of this week's Have a Word, the podcast. Um... I don't know why I do that sometimes. I just start with a weird voice. Mm. I've been making a living off that for fucking years. Decades. Hey. Um, Jeff Norcotson. Jeff Hello, Norcott man. is here. Fucking. Uh, thanks for coming in. I'm in Runcorn, mate. You are in Runcorn. I'm fucking in. It's as beautiful as everyone said. <laughs> it really was. I got off, I saw that green bridge, and I thought, I bet you that green bridge is a big deal. And then lovely Finn, who took me from the station, I said, what's the green bridge about? He said, it's just a bridge. I knew, <laughs> I knew better. I, <laughs> is that I, the old bridge? I, yeah. It's the old yeah, one. the old bridge. They're reopening that, aren't they? It's, it's open. open. Oh, the yeah, new not, bridge is quite something. Well, the, the t- top two things that they had were the green bridge and is it safe to live in Runcorn? <laughs> that was the first two <laughs> reactions. And then Did was, you Google it? <laughs> yeah, I Googled it. and Because I always wanted to know, I've become like my old man, I wanted to know population size. I've always got to know population size. And how many camps am I dealing yeah, how with? How many Runconians? Well, I don't know what they are. Runconians? Runconians. Maybe. Runconians. Runconians. They should, they should drop that. Oh, it sounds better, Runconians. And then I got to this. This Can I first up say, this is the bollocks, man. What you boys have done is fucking Thank incredible. You very much. It looks amazing. You got off your arse and did something. Should also be said that the science park it's on. Looks yeah. like the set of fucking Chernobyl. <laughs> 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 when I got here, I was like, wow. But I, I think they're doing season two right now and it's pissing me off with the parking. Is it really the same? No, oh, but okay. they are filming something here. Oh, no, it's such proper... a twi- Do you know what I look like there? You know when you, you know when you blag like a female member of your family? I went, is it really? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, burning. it's very Eastern yeah. block, isn't it? This, it really like, is, yeah. man. It really is. But old, this... It feels like a school corridor, doesn't it? Like the science block of school. Like yeah. Down this, yeah. A yeah. school with ghosts and, and court cases pending, you know. Well, they, yeah. they had to shut down in the end. There was just too much of it we going on. We spoke about this with each other quite a bit. Like, we, we feel <laughs> quite sort us. of yeah. out of place on this corridor because we're in here talking about our dicks and our bum holes and stuff. Yeah. Loudly. And go outside and then there's a scientist going past with like a big... Well, that might be dick and bum hole related as well. <laughs> you never know. They might yeah. be doing swabs of the new variants that are mainly arsehole based. Imagine if they're like bum hole scientists. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that famous type of scientist. <laughs> <laughs> they, they are some of the leading bum hole scientists <laughs> in the world. You Where do you go if you need your bum hole inspecting? Run con, mate. Like you wouldn't say it, though, would you? The annual science awards. They'd come up with another word. You know, like chiropractor. The anal science awards. <laughs> the anal science awards. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. absolute obsession with our bums at the moment is yeah. phenomenal. Yeah, a lot of bum hole based. I love run con and I love the two bridges. I think yeah, it's I like so, it really. like... This amazingly expensive one that is a toll that you don't pay mm. at the time. You have to pay very soon afterwards, otherwise you get spanked with a fine. What's the fine? It's like fifty quid. Is, yeah. So you have But to you pay. can just drive over it and then you go, ah, oh, go online and you gotta pay it by midnight tomorrow. That's deliberately there to fuck with you, yeah. isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's just your gone. average person, you know, with postponement. I gotta say as well, man, like there is there is certain southern like, not arrogance, but ignorance. So when I knew I was coming here by train, I honestly didn't think I'd be able to get here on one train. I yeah, was just, yeah, yeah. I was convinced it no, would be one of those. No, but you shouldn't be able those... to get here on one train yeah. from London. Really. It doesn't make any sense. Is it sense. a Liverpool train Can and you? it drops yeah. off at Rome? I, I, I didn't think you could. Can you get no, that? The, the Mate, direct re- Liverpool regular. train, the, yeah. the fast train from Liverpool to London and vice versa. It stops here. It goes, it goes Liverpool, Runcorn, Crew, London. 
They're the yeah. only stops. That's it. Jeff, Jeff thought he'd have to take a horse and cart from Stoke. I think that was like... Fucking train all the way <laughs> with seats, these northern cunts. Getting fucking clever. It's exactly what it is, Dan. It was the same as when the first time a lot of uh, Southern comics gig in Harrogate, right? We're told that they've got Harvey Nicks, but you don't really believe it. And then <laughs> you bowl about there and you go, fucking hell, you go, I've come all this way north and found somewhere I could afford to live. I was never expecting that. <laughs> that can't be fucking right. <laughs> it took us a long time to accept that Chester was expensive. I Even the Hollyoaks were touting this when none of us really believed it. And then Chester is, is fancy, man. Chester. You've named... Two of our three nice northern towns. If you throw <laughs> York in, we're like, yeah, yeah. that's it. That's everywhere that's I mean, reasonably I think, yeah, known. I think we have covered it. I mean, that's a funny thing, isn't it, in the south? Where do you it? live? I live now. Uh, St. Neots. It's very on... Bra- uh, well, I've moved from there. Now. I've got even more rural Cambridgeshire. And, and it is difficult when, when you're doing, like, you know, you're talking about a book, which I'm sure we'll go to, but you talk about your working class council estate upbringing. And then when people ask that question, you go, well, it's, I'm kind of, you know, between <laughs> places, but it's re- it's very rural Cambridgeshire now. It's very nice. But it's it's sort of, it's not Cambridgeshire like punting Cambridgeshire. Yeah. it's Because that's the problem is also, I grew up on a council estate in Wimbledon and that's got fucking no credibility whatsoever. And I live in a bit of Cambridgeshire. It isn't that nice, but people tend to presume, you know, it's all yeah. walking around mortar boards and whatnot. Because it sounds posh, doesn't it? It does sound posh. I did posh. one of my first gigs down south for you when I was a Manchester comic in 2004. Yes. 2000, in and around the time I met you at the Frog. Because we've been going yeah. almost the same amount of time, like 20 years we in. Are exact same peer group, I would say. Yeah. And well, you're, you've a bit, got, you're a bit younger. I was you 12. Got, you got, yeah, I hate, I hate doing this chat. And you got me down to St. Neots and it was like a big thing in my diary because I like my diary list was like uh, Manchester, Preston, Liverpool, Manchester, oh, yeah. Blackburn. Like it was really localized. Central, and then you were like, yeah. yeah, you should come down to St. Neots And we did a fucking road trip and it was like, way we're gigging I down south. Do you remember um, I ran that gig and I called it Class Jokers? What a wanky name! <laughs> and I remember, I remember writing a press release for it, and I used that phrase. I said, "The club is the brainchild of comedian Jeff Norcott." I still don't know what brainchild means. <laughs> you probably can't write in your own blurb. Yeah, yeah, in the third person. It never That's stops. Good. Me yeah, and Carl ran the Box of Toys Comedy Club. That was mine and Carl's uh, attempt. At least that's an original name. Class Jokers just sounds like fucking Amdram Group. <laughs> you know? I don't think it's that. I don't think it's it was that bad. bad. It was the really worst bad. one the frog ever had was um, on a Thursday night. They had like a curry deal for mm. their Thursday night comedy, and they called it curry and quips. <laughs> and and I when quite like that. Uh, yeah, and they were like, "It's that's our name." And I was yeah. like, "That is not a good name." And they were like, "Because of curry and chips." You're like, I don't give a fuck. The problem is for the frog. That sounds way too middle class. Curry sounds, but you but tag it up with quips. <laughs> Curry and quips. Again, that's a double act at the fringe. Yeah. Curry, 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 and, curry quips. and quips. I'm John Two. Curry, and this is Martha Quips. <laughs> Two divorced housewives. <laughs> <laughs> what was Blue? What was our co- thing called the Blue? Uh, Comedy Central Raw. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've got Secret Sunday. I mean, that, like, Blatney had a proper name, didn't it? Like, that's yeah. well, really they, like, they were already Central. called Comedy Central, and they gave us the room on a Wednesday. And we're like, you can do whatever you want. So we were like, can we use the name? And they said, yeah. And we want. It was a new material, like, so we just mm. called it Raw. Yeah. When, yeah. when promoters and comedians get too into the, oh, yeah, it's at this, but it's actually the name of the night is like, yeah. just call it the fucking Fox and Hound Comedy Club. It yeah, will make yeah. it a lot easier for everyone that doesn't give a shit about the branding. It's yeah. true. It's true. Like unless you've got like a bit of branding that's the, an absolute doozy, like the Glee Club. I mean, that was such a doozy. Yeah, they fucking sued. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. American won TV it show. Fox yeah, television. Yeah, millions of pounds. Oh, I'd love damages. to know how much. Yeah. They got. So if you don't know the story, we've touched on it before. The Seven Glee Comedy Club, the Glee mm. Comedy Club registered as a trademark in the mid nineties. Yeah, and the American TV show owned by Fox were like, well, we've started the Glee. Mm. Oh, is it? What, is it just, just called Glee? Just, just, just Glee. called Glee. Yeah. And their argument was, this is so universal, you can't trademark this name. Yeah. Forgetting that in this country, the Glee Club doesn't mean the same thing. No. Like, it's not as universal. Like, the, the quite rightly, the comedy club's like, yeah, you can't have a TV show and that, using our name. It's, it's and eventually, chain. they fucking won. They did, they did win. And and the thing is, it's a, it's a big chain to us, but it still was only like four venues. We're not talking a, a massive multinational company. No, no, company. sorry, eight figures. It was over 10 million. No, nine. 
So yeah, I'm 12. just waiting now. Yeah. Five billion <laughs> trillion pounds. <laughs> yeah. I just but they only pay 220 quid to close. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather be at Curry and Quips, <laughs> which closed in 2007. <laughs> I guess what, what I need is I need Amazon Prime to do a show called Class Jokers. Then, then you'll see the payday. <laughs> yeah, I don't think the frog are, I don't think the frog are like, <laughs> counting the money already with a. If someone just starts Curry and Quips, <laughs> which you know will probably like? be racist in some way. Do you know it's like I don't know if your mates did this, but do you remember when people started registering domain names back in the day? It was like, thing is, you read this was like this probably ages me more than you boys, but they were going, if you if you register a domain name and then a company want it, they'll have to pay you a hundred grand. And one of my mates, he registered everyone's doing it, right? It's cost two hundred quid. One of my mates registered one saying, I want a beer dot com. I was like, <laughs> But why would like a company that, that were like a, a bit? He goes, yeah, but he, but he said like if you Google, I want a beer. No, 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 no. That's not what you Google. You, you, you Google pubs near me, and he's yeah. like, no, no, no. You'll see, you'll see. That is so funny. He's like, still got it now. He's still got it now. He's still. Got it's it. what people want, and they articulate that perfectly. <laughs> yeah. I want a beer. Like, all right. yeah. I am hungry. No one ever puts that in the Google. And they if go, you were Take Green ways. King, right, with all your pubs, you wouldn't have your domain name as I want a beer dot com. You would have it as Green King Pubs. Oh, I knew a UK. few. I knew a few. Yeah, it would probably be that, right? <laughs> but I, I had a few mates. I had one mate who um, he he, <laughs> he got like a timeshare in an ice cream van, right? It was six months of the year, and he was so happy. He was, <laughs> he was like his little sideline. I said, "All oh, right, which we, we thought it was one month on, one month off." And he goes, "I got October to March." I was like, "You fucking idiot! <laughs> How many hot dogs do you think you're going to sell?" That's not it, real. It's real. Fuck it's off. Real. And this was a geezer when I worked in um, in advertising, not like the Don Draper side, but like advertising sales, but for ITV. So he was another exec, right? He was like, but he was just thought this is this is where look, this is where I make my real money is <laughs> a timeshare in an ice cream van as well. And I just think. Like, <laughs> And he's like, yeah, but I'll turn up to like events and that. And I was going, I just, yeah, I just yeah. don't think it's going to work. Was mate. he chuffed that he got the winter? He's like, yeah, but I play cricket, Jeff. So it just works. <laughs> yeah, <out>. yeah. <laughs> All my Saturdays are gone, you know, up till then. <laughs> Imagine as well that bloke, whoever negotiated that with him, when the starting point was right, I want six months on, six months off. That seems fair. Okay. October or March, that's mine. <laughs> you know, you yeah, you can have it. And he's walking around going, I got Christmas. Yes. <laughs> I got the Christmas ice cream rush. <laughs> Amazing. I um, Are you moist at them? What sort? Yeah, there's a bit of brown sauce on me top. Oh my Loads. days. That's a cla classy a moment. Um, you got a book out? I do, yeah. It's called Jeff Norcott. Um, yeah. It's just called Jeff Norcott, isn't it? It's called Jeff you. Norcott. It's called <laughs> Jeff Norcott. Where did I go right? How the left lost me? Uh, have I mentioned I'm conservative recently in the last five minutes and other titles? Okay. Uh, Is that really what you did? No, no. <laughs> no, but people take the piss because my titles are always really... I've got, I'm shit at titles, you know. So I did a show at the Edinburgh Fringe called Conservative. All I did was change one letter. I, I just I was like, right, I'm, I'm really... I think that works. I think that works. It just about works. And then I had one the following year called Right Leaning But Well Meaning. And then I thought if I did the third one going like, have I mentioned recently my politics? You know, um, because I, I, I do believe in titles that actually do just... I'm not I'm not subtle. You know, whack them over the head with it. I'm all about subtlety, me. All right. You, lot, you, you've gone the, the one words. You've gone the one words. No, I don't mean title. I mean like on this show. Often oh, you're I'll, a I'll, fucking I'll, I'll say sledgehammer. A, I'll say a joke and then for like 10 minutes, you'll be like, I don't get it. Yeah. And then I'll be like, Subtle. you know what I said before? Do you know what I mean? Subtle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But your show titles are actually a little bit like... My show titles are always sort of a bit dick swingy. I think it's funny. They're very do powerful, that. aren't they? Yeah. Uh, so I've done Unbearable, Undeniable, Pinnacle. I mean, next one's called Imperious. Yeah. You don't pay for posters by the letter, by the way. It's not Adam being a cheapskate. God, I'm doing an animal show called God. It's a cheap poster. I, I love fun. it, though. I love the idea of your third show being called Pinnacle, and then you go, fuck, what's the next one? <laughs> <laughs> Imperious. On the way uh, down. Galactic Empire. <laughs> um, so... We, we've asked our patrons to send us some questions because uh -oh. you, you've, you've carved out... Uh, a career for yourself as not just a brilliant comic, but someone who has nailed down being one of the few openly conservative mm, yeah. uh, comedians in the country. I think there's quite a lot who actually are conservative and just keep their mouth shut. When did you? When did you actually? Because when talking about when I gig for you back in the mm. day, we were just comics. Yes, I wasn't I mean, conservative then as well. well uh, you, but I, you weren't a, 
a polit- you weren't no, doing no. politics stuff. No. At what point in your sort of career did you go, actually, this is what I want to talk about? Was it just something, did you just started writing it or did you actually make a concerted effort to go, I'm going to, I've seen a gap in the market here and I'm going to be this kind of comic? So the first thing that happened was, it was about 2013 and we, you know, we'd done this circuit, right? It's great, great fun going out there, stags and hens and stuff. And I was doing a lot of army gigs, but creatively, creatively guys, you know, it's a bit limiting. And I thought, I just want, I want to try something a bit different. I love doing stuff about the difference between men and women. I always will. It'll always be in my shows. But I thought, I want to try something else. And then my missus in 2013 said, well, you voted Conservative at last election. That's a bit weird for a comedian. I thought, that's a good point. So I had the, the Leicester Festival coming up and I had an hour booked. So I just thought I'd do like 10, 15 minutes on it, see how it went. And it was, just, it was exciting. Like I had a couple of walkouts and stuff. That's not a good metric for it. Yeah, it's just fucking they all left. You know, I thought, I've never felt so alive. But And then I got like, I got probably my last good review of Chortle, but I got a good review for it. I got nominated for Best New Show and I thought, well, that was interesting, but I didn't know whether there was anything more in it. And then it was it was after that that they started saying, well, where are all the right-wing voices in comedy? Now, I won't fucking lie, there was a part of me that they went, oh, have you seen this article here? But it, I, I just found it interesting, you know, to just try and represent fairly commonly held views and stuff because comedy at that point was very... Very sort of set in, and it's not just about hard P politics, i.e. whether you vote Conservative or Labour, but on social issues, you, you tended to always know where it was coming from, right? You know, fuck the bankers, we'd already gone through that era. Fuck, you know, people yeah. who believe in God. It, and it, so it started to become a bit predictable to me. And then, and then, yeah, I won't lie, like, you know, once you see that people like it and it's creatively interesting, you, you definitely lean into it a bit. Yeah. Absolutely. It, it, the, basically, the whole industry, especially around that time, yeah. It was like just liberal left wing, wasn't it? Like it, it felt was, like yeah. it felt like it. To to go on stage and be like, ah, oh, racism's um bad and like you're just one of and yeah. it is, it absolutely is. It doesn't mean you're wrong, but you cannot have an original like take on like that sort of it because you you're on a bill where everyone's just agreeing with each other. Well, especially I think at the fringe as well, it was particularly noticeable. I think when you get more working class comics, you would naturally get people that are willing to go for subjects a bit more or hold people personally accountable, even if it can create a bit of discomfort. But at the fringe, it, it just seemed to be a procession of all the same uh, opinions. And when I did that first show at the fringe in 2016, like a properly political show, conservative. It was fucking tense, man. Like, it was really... Because the thing was, I never knew what I was going to get. Like, I would... I, sometimes I'll get, like, quite a lot of people who agree with me, and that actually wasn't that fun. Because it was normally blokes about the age of 60. I had a room for... <laughs> I had, a room for, I had a room full of white blokes going, yeah, push it further. Um, <laughs> I ain't a fringe usually, <laughs> but it's no cock guys talking my language. They come up all the way, like all Londoners as well. They come up on like a an new- England away game. Bomb me on me. And they, they, they don't. No brass Gallus. bands, Rom. Don't, don't, don't. No brass bands in Jeff Court. No cut as well. <laughs> Every time I said something negative about women, da, 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 da. and I, I did it, and you know, but you, what you always want, right, is you want to mix and comedy, and it's the truth about comedy is it does thrive on do- all sorts of diversity of opinion, different acts on the lineup, and and the best shows were always when there was a bit, you know, the other way. But then sometimes I had a night where it was all really liberal and stuff, and they were like, they'd like, I've come to get outside of my echo chamber. I, like, I imagine they had a list of 10 shows and they thought, well, I should do that show so I can have nine shows that I agree with. But those were tense as well. And it's funny, I- isn't it? Because that's the whole thing about liberal politics <laughs> is it's meant to be accepting. And then you're like, well, this yeah. isn't what I agree with. And you're like, okay, so let's test your liberalism. Let's test how oh, open you are our, to it. There's our panel show. Let's test your... I mean, all comedians are doing quiz shows now. That could be a nice tea time fun one. Let, <laughs> let's test your liberalism. <laughs> and straight after tipping point. <laughs> Call it tipping point two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. You, you love immigration, daughter. apparently. Oh, here's your daughter. <laughs> let's set up a date. <laughs> test your liberalism. <laughs> Liberal tipping point. <laughs> um, so we've done we've been doing this podcast since January 2020 and we've done a lot of Tory bashing on this podcast because I, the Tory party, uh, Boris Johnson and co, uh, give me a seething rage and uh, genuinely, uh, I I hate them from Mm. the bottom of my soul. Not Uh, a big fan of Keir Starmer though, to be fair, are you? No, because he's the same person. (laughs) 
I, I'm convinced. Um, <laughs> but so when when we today put a thing out to our patrons, have you got any questions yeah. for Jeff? There was a lot of why does he want us to starve children to death? Why? Yeah. Right now, I think you know Boris Johnson genuinely doesn't care if a few kids starve to death. I think he's like that's just the cost of running it the way I want to run it. Uh, I think there's a misconception with me and Dan from this podcast from a few of our listeners, which is that we don't engage with people we disagree with. Because mm. I don't, we've never spent a, an extended period of time together and spoke about politics. So I don't really know what you think on a lot of things well, and yeah. what you don't. And I don't necessarily, just because someone votes for a different party, to me be like, I'll bash them and I'll have a laugh and I'll take the piss. But I'm not just like, Ooh. oh, I wouldn't talk to him because I disagree. I quite like talking to people it well, yeah, I mean, test with. your liberalism <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, that's the thing about modern quiz shows as well you have to have a quotable phrase as well you know like what's your talent like how 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 liberal are you but i i I, look, I mean when it comes to boris johnson this is the thing about politics now that's so interesting is that i'm not a fan of his at all you know like i think a political choice uh, you know i used to do a gag like it was at least shit it's a choice between the least shit of two options, right? It's like you're going to get waterboarded, but you can choose sparkling or steel for the water as you slowly <laughs> fucking die. And it chokes, right? So that's how I see it. It's like an imperfect... And you're a Tory, so obviously you would go sparkling. I'm, I lean... Oh, of yeah. course I go sparkling. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I check. Is it, is it branded? You know? But it's a lean... It's- Kill me with steel! I'm a northern lad! Drown me in tap water! <laughs> Council pop! Jeff, can you just drop your mic a tad? I just can just do, so mate. we can see your face. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um... But but yeah, it's like I think there are certain parts of my political character that means I'm always likely, more likely to vote conservative. But the, but the weird thing about the last few years has been like like it's this massive endorsement. You're like fucking go Tory, yeah. Like it's always it's always been like a just an approximation. And I think you know if you can look at the current political landscape and think like it's an easy choice to to vote Labour, I, that's that's tricky because you know there are and look I'm up north now. All these northern Tory bastards these days, aren't they? Fucking strangling the country. Things have changed so much. Not where I'm from. Not where you're from. <laughs> I mean, like, that'll be, if, if Liverpool City Centre ever goes, that fucking, that's it, forget it. That's like the <laughs> fifth horseman of the apocalypse. But They the, still get votes, though. They, they do. Don't, they don't win the seats, but they always get votes. And you're like, where no, the fuck are... No, but they're, like, they're always like fifth. In yeah, Liverpool. yeah, yeah, but, but they we're still get votes, though. and no one admits it. Yeah, it's like but there's the, always like there's nowhere, there's no Tories up north. Well, seventeen thousand people. Still in this quite a lot of people. Yeah, the yeah. Wirral. You know, this place is quite close to Liverpool. Southport, Tory. Tory. Yeah, and that's very close. It's there. Yeah. yeah, North Yorkshire. I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's northerness, mate. I love, loving the Tory thing at the moment. And and what's made it interesting? <laughs> How dare you? Sir. That, that that will get kicked back. But <laughs> <laughs> we're cutting that out. But, <laughs> but what's made it interesting for me is like, whereas I've had a certain level of stick, I think in 2019, a lot of people from Red Bull communities, you know, they were c- kind of disgusted of, of certain parts of the left trying to stifle Brexit, so they lent the Tories their vote, right? And then they got loads of stick online and got called this, that, and the other. And then these recent elections. They've done it again, and I think those recent elections were the interesting ones because you think something perhaps more permanent than we thought. I didn't think it would happen again. I thought it was a case of get Brexit done and, you know, look, hold your nose, vote for the... Even though, like, the, the your ancestors who were miners are screaming at you, almost pulling your hand back to the Labour thing. But but maybe that same passion that they had for Labour has now turned against Labour a little well, bit. Hartlepool's what? a scare, isn't it? Hart- of- losing <laughs> Hartlepool, you're like, how the fuck have the Tories won Hartlepool? Well, they would have, one thing is the Tories have just gone fucking left wing. That's the other thing, like, economically. Do you remember that election they were saying, well, Tory, uh, Boris Johnson's a hard-right fascist? Now they're fucking nationalising the trains. He's gone all northern. He's calling Rishi our kid. You know, <laughs> that, like, hey, that, won, that won them Hartley Phil. <laughs> <laughs> hey, up hey, our Rishi, have a, have some Yorkshire fucking tea or something. So, They've just led into it. Racism, that though. is bored. You could, they can. So they people in Yorkshire are racist. They, they get it. Sort of while we're in <laughs> I'm this not area disagreeing with that. Yeah. about the recent elections. One of the questions we got from Ben Rain was, as a Tory, how much is he enjoying the absolute wet wipe that is the leader of the Labour Party, Keir Starmer? Because Mm. I, I was talking to Freddie Quinn on Twitter about this as like a sort of heated exchange between me and another mate. Like, I I understand why there's certain issues around Jeremy Corbyn. I do. Mm. But I was still a fan of his and I would have voted for him every day of the week and twice on Sunday before I voted for Boris Johnson personally. And Keir Starmer, when he first came in, there was a lot of people from Liverpool who I'm in a, a bubble of them on Twitter and there's mm. so many scousers there. And it's such a sort of a city grounded in socialist ideals who at the last election, the last general election, it was, uh, I 
you, you need to vote for Jeremy Corbyn if you, even if you don't like him because it's about keeping the Tories out, tactical mm. vote and sort of thing, which I sort of understand. And then as soon as Keir Starmer come in, they all the same people who said that were like, I will never vote for Labour again under Keir Starmer. And mm. I was like, right, well, you can't have your cake and eat it too. Yeah. It's still about keeping the Tories out, surely, so you've got to vote for Keir. Uh, just because he's not them. If you've got, if that it's was your maybe, the thing is, like the, the problem they got though is they keep pick, picking these North London liberal intellectuals, and they've been pushing their luck, right? They have Miliband, they had Corbyn, and then and Starmer comes along. He just looks like the kind of guy that's always just come out of hot yoga, doesn't he? Like <laughs> recently styled, you know what I mean? He looks like he's probably spends more on coffee than most of us do on our mortgage. So, <laughs> and he's just, com- but he's come from that life. He's Sir Keir Starmer. He's like the yeah he's like the lead prosecutor for. Well, I like, mean, he's he, he is a classic London left, but they would left, say. Though, they said there is this thing that they said his dad was a tool maker, um, but apparently his dad owned the factory or stuff. I always think he gets a bit. <laughs> he, he, his dad, yeah, he did make tools, but he also owned people. But I, I think that it, it's, it can, it can get murky into like who's the most working class and stuff like that. But the bottom line is, is that he he doesn't really inspire any feelings. And and the thing about Boris Johnson, and I'm not a fan. I've never been a fan. I've never had much. Pot. I get a lot of stick off Tories for like, why why don't you ever see? Any? I had a walkout in Guildford actually from a woman. It was like, she was, she was surprised by the fact I didn't like Boris Johnson. She said, well, well, he's a lot funnier than you. I thought, fucking hell. Of all the places I've talked about my politics, very like left-wing places, Bristol, Liverpool, the Edinburgh Fringe. I go to Guildford and it fucking kicks off in Guildford because <laughs> I, I don't it. like I, Boris Johnson. Well, I, I really like a witty, witty prime minister. <laughs> yes. He, he's a lot funnier than you. Is he only good at being a PM? Not interested, <laughs> but yeah. five stars for the bounce. Well, I don't, I don't think he, well, we were promised that the one thing with Boris you get, right, whether you like him or not, at the dispatch box, he's going to be proper banter. He's not. He's not funny at all. He's not that good on his feet. Look, there are was, was certain things he's done instinctively that you think, well, fair play. You know, he's got certain things achieved. But in terms of an orator, I don't even think he is what he's touted to be. But as you say, Adam, he's got this fellow the other side of it yeah. who is just fucking insipid. It's just pathetic. So I mm. I was really on the, no, give him a chance. And, mm. you know, as much as I would like the left of Labour to have a chance at running the country and see what happens, mm. I think, you know, historically, and you, the, the data's there for everyone to see, Labour only ever gets in when it leans towards the centre rather than to the far yeah. left. So I was like, I'd rather win. I'd ra- I would I want to win again. We haven't won yeah, for a yeah. while. We haven't won in my adulthood. We haven't won. So I want to win again, so let's give him a chance. And I genuinely, at the minute, won't vote at the next election because I'm just like, I could never, ever vote Tory and I wouldn't want to anyway. I don't agree with any of it. But I can't vote for him. Because I'm just like, why don't you the vote point? for the Labour Party then, not him? Yeah, isn't that what you've just said though? People it, you, doing the, it, Tories I've, at any cost. You still need to get behind the cause, don't you? Because then if everyone yeah, does vote that. for your local MP, he's I not the Antichrist. He's I, a bit of a wet wipe. He's not I, like no, but I just, I just don't think it's going to matter because he's not going to win. Of course. Like, I've got to say, in this interview, I didn't expect Adam to be the one under pressure this early on talking about politics. <laughs> so, yeah, Adam, I was going to join in. Go. If you ever want to sum up why the Labour Party's in trouble, we are both Labour voters and we are having a bit of an argument yeah. with each other. It, it's a, a microcosm <laughs> of the whole problem. Like, Come on! We've got, ne- never mind him. We're going to sort ourselves out. Well, no, uh, I'm not doing it. I think he's shit. Well, just never well, do mind. You, do you know the one thing that I respect? People say the Labour Party aren't working class anymore. The one thing that is still very working class about them is the way that they fall out. When they fall out, it's proper fucking fight at a wedding police called women coming out with clumps of hair and fascinate her out they absolutely kick the, the the shit out of each other but I think I think you're right a lot of people sold Keir Starmer didn't they so, so look just hold your nose this guy he's, he's exactly the kind of bloke you don't want but he'll get us a, a, an election win you know and people despite what they thought about Keir Starmer they did all that and he's just he's just not that good and, and you know they sort of say always well, he's friends at Keir and you go you know, if you're on a stag do and that's your nickname, <laughs> no one, you know, when a stag do splits up and you go, right, we all, some of us want to go clubbing, some of us want to go to a casino, forensic kit, you know, you know, forensic kit can fuck off, right? Even though I think. He's rugby, back in a travel lodge at like 9 30. Yeah, he is. And that rugby tackle, Boris Bloke, he's a prick, but I think it's going to be an interesting night. Yeah. And I know that loads of people will hear that go, oh, it's just so depressing, people are making choices on this basis. I'm not saying that's the reason you should make your democratic choice. But ultimately, leadership, it's got to make you feel something. And all he makes me feel is like, Keir Starmer is like, just that he gets all his stuff from the white company. You know? Yeah. Like one of those posh shops that... Do you, think, <laughs> uh, do you think Bojo will still be around to fight the next election? Do you think the higher-ups in the Tories are going to make sure that he's not facing the next election? Or has the last few months gone well enough that... 
Well, he's got a lot of enemies in the Conservative Party. He's got loads. There's loads of people that despise him because he's not seen as being very conservative. Is the other thing. He's just a sort of shapeshifter. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He can, on one hand, do say something very liberal. On the other hand, sort of like, like way through something that he's a power hungry gobshite. He, he, he likes to do whatever it takes to be to to become whatever he wants to be. Yeah. Totally. He totally. didn't expect. He wasn't the pandemic PM we were hoping for. <laughs> yeah. Let's be honest. I mean, there were point, there were points last year. I mean, I've got to say as well, when you, when you tell the book, where did I go right? And then, you know, at some point you've got to get on the, the PR trail. There was points very recently I was going, how the fuck am I going to see <laughs> on radio shows when all this shit is kicking off? Because you remember how bad it was a few months ago. Thank, thank fuck for that vaccine rollout. Thank you. <laughs> well done, <laughs> Boris. Thank you for the back. I mean, and that's the thing. It may be one of the things he benefits from is his critics make it stuff seem too impossible, right? So he'll never be Prime Minister. He's Prime Minister. He'll never reopen the withdrawal a deal. Oh, he's done it. He'll never get a trade deal in a year. He's done it. Right? He'll, ne he'll never turn the vaccine thing around. He's done it. And these are things that were all doable, but because everyone said it's so impossible, they've made him look like a fucking Avenger. <laughs> like, it's not that... You know, I mean, I'm not saying they were easy... But they've just, the, the liberal the liberal left press, they go so hard at these things. And, you know, Brexit, it's all going to be super gonorrhea and empty supermarkets. That when these things don't happen, even if they're not as good as the Brexiteers promised, you sort of say, well, we're not, you know, on the streets eating pigeon. Yeah, that it was it was it was billed as absolutely cataclysmic, wasn't it? <laughs> and it looks the same. It's a good point. Well, it right. might be it might be in the law. This might be one of those moments where someone go, "Oh, this age well," and it goes, oh, "Sorry, like in a year." That wasn't me doing the bullshit bell on you, Jeff. Like, <laughs> I'm sick of this. Let's see. What was it? Liberal? I forgot the fucking name of our new quiz. Test your liberalism. I got by on, on the vaccine. No, I got mine yesterday. I got the. Uh, Got the Pfizer. How um, I love Pfizer, please. It's a bit luxury, isn't it? Thank you. Um, yeah. How? What was the after effects? It's all, I feel like slightly coldy down, but it's, it's not that big a deal, you know. But we know, we all know, right? Like the Pfizer, it's a bit fancy in it, and, and the Moderna. That'd be something. Well, I got the AstraZeneca, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? What is it? Pfizer. Which one's which? Is the AstraZeneca? It's the Oxford, Oxford. one. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then there's Pfizer. Which is the German one. You'll take it. You'll get better. Hmm? Okay. <laughs> Good. <laughs> wow. That's, that's the tagline. <laughs> yeah. And then you fuck. And then, oh, come in for your shot. <laughs> but hang on, there's no needle. There's just my dick. <laughs> Have you been sexually abused by a German bloke? <laughs> oh, Adam, you've had your shot. <laughs> mm. The Moderna, the Moderna's. Yeah, I, I, I was quite, I was quite interested in the Moderna because I thought, I thought that's the kind of one that you last minute you tell your missus. You go, by the way, babe, I've booked a Moderna. Said, oh, Moderna, very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Moderna, <laughs> but the AstraZeneca, I think it's brilliantly British, though, isn't it? Because it's just, it's cheap. Fucking knock it out. You don't need to refrigerate it. <laughs> it's not. It's Off not. The shelf, it's not it? all that. Yeah. Get it in your son. Yeah, yeah. And Sound, you can light your barbecue with it. You can it's like, useful. <laughs> and it sounds great when a scouser says it as well. AstraZeneca. Well, yeah. I got. I, I did I tell you this on podcast? I told you the night when I was driving home. I was there. Yeah. When they called. No, no, no. no. So this was a couple of weeks ago. So I got the AstraZeneca job. I get a bit of health anxiety, like mm. quite bad. And I'm always worried about blood clots, heart attacks, and strokes. They're just always on my mind. He's a right, right laugh. Right? Yeah. No, I have the same. I'm so saying, yeah. I, I'd had it against me better sort of anxiety judgment. Yeah. I, I got off of it and took it. And then literally two days later, they were like, uh, like one in three people who get this get a oh, blood clot. Fuck, and I was like, yeah. oh, fuck, no. So for like a week, my health anxiety just went off the rails. Mm. So I was driving home from here. Oh, yeah. And uh, I'm going across <laughs> the Runcorn Bridge. And because, uh, here's how I cope with my health anxiety. I distract myself. So if I'm anxious at home, I play FIFA because I'm a typical man. I can't multitask. I can't do two things yeah. at once. So if I'm playing FIFA, I'm not worried about my health. I can't do both. So it distracts me. Because I was driving home on the route I do twice a week, at least, I was on autopilot. So I could, I could be anxious. So on purpose, I went, I'm going to go the long way home. So instead of going onto the motorway, I went through speaking Liverpool. I got to traffic lights. And I went, oh, right. And because I'd stopped for a second, I started getting a bit anxious. And I just looked up, and the building next to me has got a big sign on it saying, AstraZeneca. <laughs> <laughs> they trying to keep all their fucking supplies. And I had no idea it was based in Liverpool. There's a guy being carried out of there on a stretcher. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was, I was like, and. It made me not anxious, even though it, because it was just so ridiculous that I'd gone that way to not think about the blood clots. No, mate, listen, I, 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 I think, you know, I, I had some of that as well. I do, I do suffer from some of that as well. But also I realised that because of my politics as well, and you would you naturally associate 
anti-vax with being right wing. I don't know why, because yeah. a lot of people are against Big Pharma. But I suddenly realized when I said that I'd had it, loads of people are close to me going, oh, thank God you had that. And I realized everyone just assumed that I wasn't going to get it. But I had a delay for exactly that reason. I had a fear that I'd expressed with a GP about a condition or something. I just had to iron out before I had it. But everyone must have secretly going, he's fucking anti-vax. Jeff's gone anti-vax. <laughs> so just then waiting. It, then it gets out on the family WhatsApp. It's like, oh, praise the Lord. He's, well, he's seen the light. I was always going to have it. We got a question that I actually didn't pull out mm. because they named a certain comic and I'm not going to do that so mm. one of the questions was how do you feel about having uh, lunatics like other comic lumped in with you and mm. it's sort of on the, the the person mentioned is an anti-vaxxer Bill Gates yeah. is microchipping people that is seen yeah. as right wing <laughs> and there's so many people who see you as the same, isn't there? Do you know what I mean? Well, yeah, I mean, it's a spe- So you go right-wing comedian. First up, for a long time, people immediately think of the worst right-wing views. So you say that, they get fucking racist, don't they? And you go like, and you're left-wing, so I bet he's really lovely. You know, it's the, same, it's the same problem that left and right have generally. Is if you think left-wing, you go, John Lennon, Yoko Ono, you know, never Stalin, right? Yeah. <laughs> right, right-wing is Hitler. So there is this image problem. But it's, it's a spectrum. There are comedians on, you know, a lot of what gets called left-wing comics and centre-left comics, essentially, especially on topical panel shows. If you talk about an out-and-out left-wing comic, you know, you might be talking about someone like Alexi Sale, you know, and he, even as we speak, he, he's getting into controversy for certain things that, that he said. So I think that what happens is there's a lot of people that just simply don't like the idea of there being comedy from the right. They By the way, sorry, just because it won't make any sense if I don't big this up at any other point. It has to be now. Have you seen the video of Alexi Sale at the pro-Palestine march in London I yesterday? And he called uh, Keir Starmer a horrible little shitbag. <laughs> like, in front of, like, thousands of people. Hey. He goes, uh, I don't know whether the leader of the opposition's here, the little shitbag. It's so fucking great. I know where you added horrible as well, clearly, in that. <laughs> <laughs> Did little Adam Rowe. Oh, I, think, I think he might have said horrible. I think he might have. I don't know. It's but that's the thing, isn't it? He's, he's a more, like, spicy flavour of yeah. left. But the thing about right-wing comics is a smaller palette, so they would naturally think that we're all coming from the same place. And truth about me, right, is when I started this, people would say I was edgy, refreshing. It's absolutely none of those things. And I, but I wanted to think that. I was thinking, yeah, I'm a fucking edgelord, mate, with my views. <laughs> the truth is, I'm a right-wing centrist dad. That's what I am. I'm 44... Yeah, I live. I, I vote conservative and stuff like that. I want to have a nice house, few holidays. You know, I've got sort of material aspirations, and and so I think it's the opposite of edgy, but it's just the context. Yeah, of, you've of made this, yourself this, a white straight minority. I know it's in comedy. Right. Yeah, like we were talking about it last <laughs> night. You get booked on know, on yeah, on panels and bills because you're like, well, Jeff's obviously. You know, he's, one of them, many. He's the diversity booking. It yeah, is, he's quite incredible. But I do, I do think that like. A lot of people probably have spent a long time saying that, well, well right-wing people aren't funny. And, and people don't like to be any evidence that proves them wrong. So if, if you do something and it's funny, they'll either say, well, he's a character or, or, or pretend that there wasn't a laugh in the room or stuff like that. So there's a group of people who are just never going to uh, accept this because they were always like, well, comedy is our thing. That's the one thing that they, they can't have. But I, do, I, do, I just thought, I remember thinking this in 2013, I just thought it's a bit fucking weird to think that certain humans can't be funny. Because that was once yeah. applied to women. It was once applied to... I'm, I, I really, You always play out at it. Oh, what is Jeff Norcott saying? He's uh, experienced the same suffering as women in comedy. I'm not. But yeah. I, I can anything s- it's worse, isn't it? For you? It's anything, yeah. it is a lot fucking worse. <laughs> <laughs> it a lot worse. Inverted snobbery. Inver- it's just inverted snobbery, isn't it? Like, well, you're from that. You can't be this. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I, don't think, I don't think the country... like. There's been a lot of this debate recently. I don't think the country is sitting there. Anyone's going... You know, where's this right wing comedy vehicle? I don't think anyone's saying that. But I think what they might do is when they watch topical panel show type things, they might think, well, there were certain points of view that I hear very commonly that weren't in that. That's all that needs to change. It doesn't need loads of conservative comedians. It just needs a bit of a broader sweep. If you've got seven people on a panel show, you know, maybe one of them, and not just me as well. I mean, like, I'd love it to, you know, only, but it needs to be more people just to say, Hey, you know what? Maybe chest feeding instead of breastfeeding is a bit of a fucking weird phrase. Right. Oh, is that a thing is that now? Is that a thing? Yeah. yeah is that NH- where you draw the line? It's NA- yeah, that's what I'm really angry about. Is that actually a thing? Yeah, it was NHS. NHS, have, um, there's been a few tweets. I mean, it's just an example of one of those subjects. And it doesn't mean that this is what I got into this for, was semantics, <laughs> right? But but yeah, they were, uh, they were tweeting stuff. And instead of calling it breastfeeding, they were calling it chest feeding. And, and, and I would imagine... With most topical panel shows, we know what comedy's like. People will be like, you know, they might dance around that a little bit. So the good thing is, if it's someone like 
you know, me or Simon Evans or Alan Cochran or any other brilliant people is that is that they might just represent the other view. That's all. That's literally all it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, mm, I, that's totally Should we talk about chest feeding? I don't <laughs> understand <laughs> why the need for that change in life. Isn't breast, is breast it to, is really offensive. Yeah. What, is really it to non sexualize it or is it to non gender? It's a, really, it's a really liberal thing, isn't it? Surely. It, because to, because to like, mums who were born as men need to chest feed as well. And that's fine. <laughs> That's fine. But I, Just <laughs> letting their child suck on their empty <laughs> man tit. Why don't we call it big juicy titty time? Oh, and that's the other option. That's what your mark holds it. That's yeah, because actually titty. That feels like it needs a rhythm. Big juicy titty time. Big juicy titty time. And also breast is a medical term. That's the problem. And and, yeah. and titty time is titty. So that isn't a medical term. Yeah. That's subjective. Yeah. yeah, man tits. Yeah, exactly. Titty time. Titty time. Big juicy titty time. You can see that on a pamphlet from the NHS. <laughs> Jeff Norcott's new uh, Edinburgh show title. Big juicy titty time. <laughs> and with, on the post it's just Jeff with his, with his finger on his watch yeah. and then big juicy tits next to him. I really will. I, I like to let people know what a fucking show's about. <laughs> and, and also, I really, because a lot of people say, what is he like, Roy Chubby Brown? That will be the moment where I am when I come in with the goggles <laughs> on. <laughs> the patchwork coloured thing. Big juicy titties. Two big tits at the back. I think this question is, it's sort of one that I have when mm. I speak to uh, friends and colleagues who are, are Tory leading. And I think it's one that I imagine you get a lot, uh, almost like a hack question to ask a Tory, but it's, it's something that does sort of... It is in my head. So it says, how can he vote conservative when he knows how corrupt and he said slash racist they are? Now, I, I know not every member of the Tory, Tory party or even Tory MPs are racist. I think some of them are. Uh, but I think corruption is a mm. massive problem there, certainly from the, the echo chamber that I'm in. Uh, he knows that out for themselves. How does he square that away mentally? So first, of all, I think with the racism, you know, there is... Definitely, you know, it's def definitely racism <coughs> in the Tory party. And they've probably got a moment to come with Islamophobia, you know, in the same way that the Labour Party did with anti-Semitism. Oh, my God, and that's been the last two or three years, isn't it? That if you're a yeah. Labour Party, you can't be throwing that fucking... Well, that's the point, isn't it? And I think that the simplistic notions of left and right have been changed by quite a few things. And I think that the anti-Semitism, that one of the... Labour have just welched on a lot of their, their brands. And I probably shouldn't turn this back to Labour bashing, but, but in a way, it's what I'm saying. At the 2019 election, there wasn't a pure choice, was there? You know, Boris Johnson, who said these these things in the past are ridiculous things to say. And you've had Jeremy Corbyn that in this present has turned a blind eye to anti-Semitism. So again, it comes down to imperfection. When it comes down to corruption, I mean, one is that at the moment, like nothing has been proved. But I, I look, I fucking in a couple of years, I guarantee Matt Hancock's friends will all have islands, right? There's definitely they're all going to be on fucking jet skis, so, <laughs> and they are. I think they're quite confident in the moment because what they're saying is, well, we we give out this contract because everyone's screaming out for PPE, so we we we're not ashamed. We didn't hesitate. If we knew someone, we go go on. There you go. There's a fucking contract. Sort yourself out. And in this moment of COVID, I think that they're they're okay with that argument. What I think will change over time, five years time when we're all skin. Right, and then the mirror every day are going. Here's here's Matt Hancock's friend one. Here's Matt, you know, and we started to see people that got rich during this time. I think that that is one way back for the left, you know. But I do think like it is at this point unproven. But I think you'd have to be quite naive to think that there wasn't a fair bit of nepotism. That's why I don't think he's going to fight the next election. I think things will level yeah. out, and then it will be the Tory higher ups going. Yeah, so there's going to have to be people taking bullets here. Yeah, and Hancock is a is just a, a dead man walking yeah. because the, no, the Tories don't want to face an election going. So what about all these, you know, jobs for the boys here? What all it's, yeah. it's, I think everyone knows that like the wealthy, the upper classes look after themselves, but when it's a pandemic, when people are dying, mm. then it's really reflects badly, doesn't it? Yeah. These, if you these feathered are, your nest during, yeah. during that time, I mean, there's another part of me that does sort of think of Matt Hancock. He's the, just gutted um, not one of his mates. You know what I mean? Like, is he, he's, he's like, it's not good what he's done. Jeff, I've got a contract for you. <laughs> <laughs> what if, can you make up in Cambridgeshire? <laughs> if you're one of his pals, you're like, what an absolutely solid nailed on guy. I was thinking like, you know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because they're all sat around the dinner party. He's like, guys, can anyone make masks? <laughs> can anyone make plasticky masks? Yeah, I can. I'll give it a fucking go. You know, like, back, back to the future too. Like the thing was, he went back with the almanac and sorted himself out. I think if I made that film now, I'd go back to Matt Hancock 
when he was about 12 and just become his best fucking mate. <laughs> like, that would be, that'd be an absolutely... Jeff Norcott, guaranteed... the PPE king of Cambridgeshire. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he, he's, he's incredible. But they, the but they... fucking almanac. What a random back to the t- t- future two reference yeah, that I did, was. I didn't know that word until I Have saw Have you that. got a safe? <laughs> Get a safe. <laughs> fucking brilliant. Yeah, me, me whacking my young self over the head. You gotta befriend Matt Hancock. <laughs> you realise, I know he looks like he should have his face flushed down a fucking toilet. <laughs> but you gotta be his only friend. Um, so, on the subject, before we have a break and move on to some non-politics and have a, a fuck around in the last bit, mm. you're, you've mentioned that you don't think Boris can test the next election. Right, be, may, and may, I maybe. agree. I, 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 maybe it's sort of, uh, I'm, you know, I'm not too up on me politics, I suppose. Um, Unless they call if it If he early. doesn't, mm. do you think there's a chance it's Rishi? Could be. I mean, w- what you have in Rishi Sunak is a popular conservative chancellor. Let's just, let's just take that in. You know, where, where, where we've come from. I mean, one thing I would say, you know, being economically right-wing is, yeah, yeah, when you throw around cash, you, you do sort of become a bit popular. He's sort of like, he's sort of like everyone's rich mate, isn't he? Where we're all going, <laughs> hey, Rishi, hey, what a guy. He's like, and he, he probably has moments of paranoia where he's thinking, is this, is this just because I'm... No, no, but you got, you've got proper cans of Coke in your fridge back home, haven't you, Rishi? <laughs> and all his mates, all, we're all piling around there. So his popularity, even his popularity is going to change because if he's the Chancellor at the time where, you know, they finally discovered the magic money tree, he's also potentially going to be the Chancellor when, you know, they start raising taxes and stuff like that. But if they, maybe if they're smart, they might just nudge him sideways for a while and just, just stick that job <laughs> <laughs> some poor bastard that comes in for the period of, you know, when austerity. Yeah, Wait, call an, call an election early, move mm. Rishi over. Yeah. So by the time he's prime minister and they're all like, fuck, these taxes are ridiculous and the mm. national debt. Like, well, he's not, he's not the chancellor he's anymore, Rishi. is he? Prime minister. What yeah. will be quite interesting is if Rishi Sunak wins an election and becomes prime minister and those of the left who do think that everyone on the right is racist yeah. have to square it with themselves that, Conservatives have just elected a brown and, man to run the country and two female prime ministers. But what what they'll just say is, and I've seen this argument, and I find this shocking, is they'll just go, "Well, he's not a proper Asian." You know what I mean? They'll actually dispute his ethnicity. Where they'll just kind of sideline that information, and and I think that they won't be able to reckon with it much longer because every time a conservative, uh, black or Asian person becomes powerful, that the same thing gets run out. Whereas they, oh yeah, yeah, you know, like they're they're a coconut or they're an Uncle Tom or stuff like that gets thrown in from from within the Black or Asian, not not totally, but increasingly online. And we think, just did it I, to Keir Starmer though, didn't we? We went, well, he's not a proper socialist. Yeah, yeah, he's no, from you're North ab- London, you're absolutely right. Like it's a weird little like, how can you deflect their yeah? Let's a- make him authenticity. Eat. That's what maybe they should do with Starmer is they should make him eat like really working class food on telly. Just see how he reacts to it. Just feed him like a cold kebab and just watch for little signs. And look at that, he's, he's fucking dry heaving, he ain't. See, the reason I don't like Keir Starmer isn't because he's part of the London elite and he's Sir Keir Starmer and his dad owned the fucking tobacco factory or whatever. It's because... <laughs> Tools. <laughs> tobacco factory? He's <laughs> just making it up now. <laughs> he was a slave owner. <laughs> you know. It did. <laughs> like, I'm fine. And he's not, and he's not a real Asian. Yeah. I'm fine with all of that. Like, all yeah. of it. Genuinely couldn't give a shit. I just don't like how shit he is at his job. Right, That's yeah. why I don't like him. Yeah, he's a wet wipe. Yeah. Gob shite. He is. shite. He's, only, he's only been an MP since 2015, by the way. He, he ain't been around that that. He's long. a darling of the Labour Party, just like David Miliband was. And look where that goes. Ed, Ed Miliband, it's not good. David Miliband would have won a general election, though, wouldn't he? I don't know, at that time, at that time, people were, were, the whole Blairite slick thing, I think now looking back, you think, well, at least he looked like he knew he was doing. But at that time, the whole spin thing and the Blairite era, people were, were ready for a change. But it's really funny recently. He might you know, be back. What's that? He might be back. He could be back, but I think personally... He's running a non-profit in New York, and he, or something like, I think, David Miliband. Yes, yeah, he's been over in the States for a while. But yeah. I, I think Andy Burnham, like, it's really funny when recently Andy King Burnham... King of the North! <laughs> King of the North! But it shows that all it took, right, was to be passionate, 
to be Northern, to, to seem left wing. And, and everyone said, well, oh, he could be a great leader of the Labour Party. Go, yeah, imagine if he'd fought a lead- leadership campaign as recently as 2015 and got spanked by Jeremy Corbyn, which is what fucking happened. <laughs> he was obviously the best candidate, you know. So he's somebody that I think if, if eventually, and he, he did not, he didn't play around when they said to him, if the, he, he, normally it's like transfer speculation. It's like, oh, you know, he could have said, well, I'm very happy as your mayor of Manchester and all this sort of stuff. He's like, yeah, if they, if they need me, I'll, I'll come. And I think that if they do need him and he does come, I think that could be where Labour starts to revive. I I would fucking love that. That was one of the yeah. best moments of the autumn when, when Annie, Bur- went, Annie Burnham, no, yeah, Annie Burnham was it. basically <laughs> stood outside the town hall in Manchester and went, I've told him to fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> and the whole north went, go on, Annie. Come on. Brilliant. They told me to shut it. I've told to fuck off. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, one out, all out. <laughs> Down tools, fuck it. It was yeah. great. It was great. What policies have you got beyond that? I don't know, but they can fuck up. <laughs> they can't have Nick or King in the North. I literally went to go, quick, King in the North gift. And I went on Twitter and everyone had done it. I was like, ah, fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, th- I think Andy Burnham's got a real shot if he if he gets in, in oh. power. Uh, break time? It has to be. No more politics, eh? We've done it. Yeah. We've hit that box, haven't we? Yeah. What's happening, guys? Ooh, look at your outfit. Shocking. You look horrible in that. That's a shit T-shirt, jumper, dress thing, whatever that is you've got on. What you need, lad, is a fucking T-shirt or a hoodie from haveawaredpod.com. You want some official Have A Word merch? Go to haveawordpod.com and get some then instead of wearing that fucking shite you've got on. It's horrible. You look a joke. Don't believe in the house like that. You want a hoodie that says rat? That's what you need, lad. Go and get it. Haveawordpod.com. Part Part four. Final section. Part four. What? Part four. I thought you said half four. I thought thought you said half four is in golf. Yeah. Yeah. Par four. Par four. Keep it on the fairway, Jeff. <laughs> We're on the par for this uh, episode. Not this on the fairway. We'll have a pint at the 19th. Um, can you plug your podcast just before we do the rest of our podcast? Basically, in the interval, I'd say, can I plug my podcast? No, but it's basically. good. People, I want to, we should share the wealth. Good guys should be getting the nod. It's well, called Jeff Norcott Hates Starving Children. Just, uh, yeah, it's yeah. available on Apple, Spotify. I was going <laughs> to say it's called Fuck the Kids, but then that sounds like, uh, <laughs> that sounds like a different one. It's called, again, with one of my fucking genius types, it's called What Most People Think, you see? Because, ah. you know, people think it in majorities. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's just, it, to be honest, a lot of it is kind of chat like, like we've had, but about social and political issues, but coming at it from someone who's partially informed, but we'll still wang on about it anyway. Hey, Jeff, if you want to get m- more subscribers from this, you've yeah. got to say it's about your bum hole as it's well. It's about, but oh no, I mean, we, what any we bum do, hole chat? What we do have, I'd love to have both you boys on it, is a cuss count. And because we know that swearing's amazing, so I, try, I decided to formalise it. So you remember, like on Top Gear, you had Star and a reasonably priced car, and then they had like what their laps were. Yeah. I keep a running total of swearing. And slap it up. Yeah, slap it up on, on the thing. And currently, I think Romish is top with oh. an average. He's done two episodes, av- average of 26 swears. David Badil, very credible. 26? 26 in, four episodes. Four in an hour? Yeah. I, d- I mean, I've, 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 done, I've done some. That I mean, there was one, he works out the average as well, this Patreon I've got. David Domain, absolute legend. But he, one, I was one point. Is he your goat? Is he your He's my yeah. absolute <laughs> Patreon, Hall of Fame. He, uh, <laughs> He, uh, 1.6 swears a minute I was averaging and I didn't I wasn't conscious hey. of it. I didn't just want to be top of the leaderboard but sometimes when I do the solo episodes if I'm trying to talk about the news of the day every time I stop to try and think of a joke I'll say fucking yeah it's thinking time you need yeah. Chris Washington on because he'll get to the top of your leaderboard <laughs> in the first sentence really <laughs> yeah. man knows how like to I swear I top that by accident as well I think I think we, I think there's a lot of great swearing in this room. I can tell. Do you feel like I felt under pressure to swear. Then it's something like <laughs> shit. <laughs> um, uh, we've got a would you rather mm. the, ha- the house the would you the we built this podcast staple yeah. Would you rather be no? Don't read the prep. The bed did you? Why can't I Can read? You, no, because you need to. Don't read the prep. You don't do the prep. You don't read the prep. You listen to the prep. That was such a couple that have been in a room a lot for a few <laughs> years. That I make the tea. That was married 20 years. Benny says, <laughs> order, order. See, you didn't do it properly, did you? You fucking... He doesn't like it when I touch the buttons either. Fat-handed twat. <laughs> You're the woman, would, yeah. would you rather... <laughs> Benny says, would you rather be a prop comic, a magician, or shoot yourself in the hand with a gun? <laughs> 
I, you have to do one. You can't do. You look, what I was going to do there was the usual thing comics do of terms and conditions that we do now. Look, there's a lot of great prop comics. There's a lot of magic. I'll be honest. I find magicians. There isn't though, is there? Well, I, 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 I <laughs> there's you. one good magician. I I What's find that? Pete Furman. I find magician Pete's great. I see him at Panto the other year. Fucking incredible. Absolutely. He, he was he he was just just brilliant. Just brilliant. And and I'm not saying that he's not also good at magic. Also excellent. This is what I'm doing now. He's I, better at panto. Yeah. What a dick that is. I, 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 no, I mean, he's an all right act, but phenomenal I, I at think, panto. Which I think he wouldn't mind that, off. given the old the old panto cash. I, I think uh, he, he managed to somehow make it credible. But magicians on the whole... When Adam gets panto, it will be the one of the greatest <laughs> oh, days and he of will my motherfucking life. He's going to be... Gonna I know you, you are not going to do it now, but one day you will. <laughs> when you've married Sam in eight weeks and then you've got different responsibilities. <laughs> Lads, uh, I'm I'm thinking about doing a panto in Liverpool. I'll be like, I can't wait. Bring He's it on. He's going to be some sort of sister, though, isn't he? You get, you get like a lot of money for it, though, don't you? You do. Yeah. yeah. It'll be you, Ray Quinn, Pete Price, <laughs> um, Purple Aki, maybe. Yeah. What <laughs> the fuck? You just don't think. Tin Ed. Just scouts. Tin Ed. Yeah. Yeah. Death be- in panto, Tin Ed. Tin Ed. Purple Lack and the Beanstalk. Ack and the Beanstalk. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what's the big panto? No, 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 no. 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 Yeah. no. What, it, was the, no it was a good two. It was the three. What's the, the big three What's the big theatre in Liverpool that does the panto? It's like the, the Empire. Empire. Empire yeah. I could have guessed. Right. I, I just, I find magicians. I find Cinderella. <laughs> oh, that. <laughs> Shut up. Shut I think magicians are... I think it's weird to be a magician. Do you know what I mean? I think, like, especially when you're grown up and you talk to other grown ups. Magic going, was the first thing I ever did on stage. Well, it's nonce, isn't it? What, what is, yeah, I think it is a bit. And also, <laughs> you're asking other adults to, but we go, well, either this is bollocks or you're, you're fucking magic, which would be so weird. Like, if I actually <laughs> thought that, I would freak the fuck out and I, w- I just wouldn't want to be near because I think, like, you'd fuck with my stuff. So they're going, you know, yeah. and it, it's can clearly. You, can you imagine? First person to ever legitimately <laughs> realise that they can do magic yeah. and to go, I need a deck of cards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How I'm going to use this with cards. The first person in history to ever do the watch my thumb. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone like round the cave area. Ah! Yeah. But, yeah. Also, so, but what we're talking about here Dad, is that? someone standing behind that and realising that temporarily his thumb did disappear. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That's what they're asking you to believe. So I'm immediately they do a trick. I'm like, just fucking show us a trick, mate. You're like, it's so patronising. And you know, when there's kids around, maybe you shouldn't say that. You when know. you said that, then I seen you at like a table in yeah. Barcelona. The Josh Pugh gonna, video, yeah. magic at the table. The Josh Pugh video from last week. Yeah, it's yeah, exactly yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. It's I, a way I of getting... really, really like magic. I really like it. And would you want to be one though? I'd rather be one of them than a prop comic, yeah. Prop comic, Jeff. I, I really loved booking all sorts of comics, and I would book. I'd book women. I would book. You know, I'd. I'd wow. I was very inclusive. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Different time. This so gig was in two thousand. <laughs> very controversial. Jeff was a progressive back in 04. <laughs> well, I've got a woman. No, not tonight. And she's struggling. <laughs> well, do, do, uh, do you know what I? I, I can lay claim. So um, last summer when. Um, when Black Lives Matter was happening, it's a way of getting everyone to go quiet. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Um, yeah. right, when Black, uh, there was this one lad that came to me on Instagram that was giving me stick because I hadn't turned my Instagram square black, which is obviously the way we all knew was going to defeat racism in the long run. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. was like, look, mate, I'm, I'm listening. Everyone says to straight white men, just listen. I was like, I'm fucking listening. That's what I'm doing, taking it all in. And then he started going, well, you've got to prove you're not racist. And I thought, fucking hell. I, well, the moment you start saying I'm not racist, but it sounds like you're racist anyway. And then I remembered back in the day, I did a gig once in, in Feltham, right? A really dodgy part of West London. And and we did it. We did a gig at what was the former home of the BNP, which I didn't realise this. And I just, right, because I'm a very open-minded guy, I just happened to book all comedians of colour. You know, I thought about who I wanted. I think it was Nick Coppin, Clyde West, it was, I think it was Jerry Kai or something like that. I just want to really like up front, in your face, not a comedy. And they must have thought, what a statement this geezer's making, you know. <laughs> well, I just thought well, that's going to be a fun lineup for this thing. And then it fucking, it kicked off that night, but it didn't kick off because of race, basically. It kicked off because you d- of- You booked a gig at the former home of the BMP yes. and booked it as a urban comedy night. I did, yeah. <laughs> that is phenomenal. The yeah, well- stylist was there for the intervals. <laughs> <laughs> 
I would rather be a prop comic than be on a bell. Um, yeah, I, do, I, I have a real issue though. I mean, this is a thing. It's funny because like a lot of comics, a few comics had a pop at me, but I've never, I never can like be like negative or about or about other comics. I don't know why. I don't know why that is. I, yeah, no, I, I, I don't like doing that like openly. No. <laughs> what's up groups mate whoa fire. it's really funny like, I, I hate how weak it makes me but I can have like and you, as you can imagine some of the shows I've done I've seen thousands of comments fucking right wing gammon fuck cunt all this shit and I'll take all of that but then if one colleague and I shouldn't probably arm people with this going I wasn't sure about what you said there Jeff I go, <laughs> I'm so <laughs> I'm so broken by it it's pathetic so I agree that there's not a, to go out and be cunty to other acts mm. is I think unnecessary but I also think there's a little bit of two-facedness about the industry sometimes yeah. where we're all very nicey nice to each other's faces and then really cut in behind each other's backs. And you could say, oh, well, that just let, like makes the thing go. I think what we're trying to do here is just be honest and maybe be a bit more honest than we, we'd be in a dressing room when it's like, like yeah. And also, it, also, got, it's, it, it pays to be diplomatic in a dressing room because people are about to go on stage and it's awkward and you don't need to be a cunt. But what I think we're doing quite well is like we talked about Sheffield comedy a couple of weeks ago mm. and I said things that I've kind of wanted to say either in real life or on Facebook like for a while, but you get to sort of go, no, I genuinely mean this. And I think I would say this to the person. And I think people get tired of like, oh yeah, everyone's just done really well. And I think yeah. they're a great comic. Well, and as you know, so as, good. as like, a comic now, all I want to know is what you said about Sheffield Comedy. The, ever since it's you just mentioned about to be a bit of beef there. Oh, is there? The, the last laugh's obviously been sort of there for a long time and there's a new comedy club opening and it's going to be sort of like, you, you can't, can't play there, but you can't play. Yeah, it, yeah. There's, there's some serious Tony Soprano shit going yeah, down yeah, in yeah. Sheffield. I think that's going to be happening. And I just, I don't know. I think people respond to a bit of fucking honesty, but then there's like the unnecessary egginess of like, I tell you, else is shit. Like, you know, in a way, weirdly, I suppose I, I was thinking maybe more like you know the kind of like the snipiness in a more high profile comics in a way where someone will just slag off someone or in that sub tweety sort of way so in a way I probably agree with you like there's something definitely better about being really up front but there's a way that people sort of describe a comic but do everything other than name that name but whereas I've always just had a blanket policy of like not not saying anything directly about name but that's probably only because my pathological fear of being like excommunicated from the guild yeah I've I told this story a while ago but I saw a headliner slag off an open spot while the open spot had gone home in Leeds, I think within about six months, a year of starting. And it was a really uncomfortable feeling of like, God, oh, that seemed cunty. Because the open spot was one of those like journeyman open spots. And the headliner is a name that if I said, we'd all go, oh shit, that's a proper headliner. And if he'd have been in the room, he'd have been fucking devo to hear it. Yeah. And as a comic, I was like, ah, there's a line that I, even as a new comic, I was like, I think that's gone past the line. There's no need for that. I mean, just that. as an anecdote, it is sort of funny just because it's so bang out of order. Like the headliner. He started, ri <laughs> he started ripping. The, uh, uh, it's I'm not done this on purpose, but this comic had a prop for one of his jokes yeah. and it was, he doesn't do comedy anymore and it wasn't great. And it was uh, an Irish comic who was like, what the fuck was that? Who the fuck? He doesn't even look like the fucking thing. But he's doing like a few minutes on it and it was kind of funny, but you're like, yeah. oh, this is so cunty. That's what you don't want is it to no, be actually... But like, oh, he, he, Adam, he, it he, was... No, it he's was, gone home. He didn't hit it. Uh, it was so cunty. Oh, like, he's gone it. home. Yeah, well, I'm maybe. Getting, well, I'm getting vibes there. The other night, Adam was on stage at uh, Hot Water <laughs> <laughs> and someone had a funny turn in the middle. And and uh, what would what be worse? Can you imagine though, if you was to act and then what the comedy that the headliner did about it was actually just genius, like really good on the level of like Ed Byrne picking apart <laughs> ironic. And then, oh, him. yeah, but you can do that without absolutely shitting on the guy. Yeah. And then there's the way of doing it where you're like, wow, you're really leveling him. Now I'm retelling it. It's kind of funny. <laughs> it is because it was a bad bit, but he, it, yeah. But it sounds like the comic at the end actually did like quite an intelligent deconstruction of it. Oh no, he just cunted oh, him okay. off. Oh, yeah. royally cunted him off. Yeah. But then again, 
is it better to be all like Bezos and be like, oh, this next, the headline is a really great guy. Well, we all know, we came from that era shortly after the kind of, we still had the ones where the, 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 the compares would put the mic in tight, you know, and have that thing. Yeah, of when like, you're doing jonglers. When, when you're doing jonglers and they would be like, okay, well, I've got to bring some prick on now, but if you want to know why I'm back on, I'll be on in 20 minutes. I mean, that oh, stuff yeah. still happened and they're good for anecdotes, but it, it was re it was really hard at, uh, at the time. I mean, I had that once where I did a Christmas gig in a comic on before me and put the mic in really hard and fucking turned it off and slightly loosen the cable <laughs> just so just so you can look I mean it's funny Jungler's dressing rooms yeah. were unbelievable I mean, how so much they were it's so much and, the, and, and you know when people talk about diversity in comedy the, the addition of more women to the workplace was definitely like change that culture because it was a bit much and then so when you go on and the, the the public the audience will always hold you accountable for everything that happens even if the sound fucks up clearly that's nothing to comics do with fault. you yeah, yeah, yeah. comics fall right so you go and you go hang on a minute hang on a minute and they're oh, like this yeah. guy's shit yeah, this yeah, guy's yeah. absolutely yeah. shit I, I, I knock my headphones off my head before in the first section and you totally do lose credibility yeah. <laughs> pulling a mic out and then the lead going flop yeah. makes you look like you've never my, done comedy the first time I ever did late and live in Edinburgh I was dead drunk and it's a yeah. radio mic and it's a radio mic that is too big for the clip mic stand that it's in. Yeah. So they, they, so I walk on it late and I've, I've had like six drinks or whatever throughout the evening waiting to go on at three o'clock in the morning. And I took the mic out the stand because it was so tight and I didn't have a tight grip. It just like, like it was coming out of a pellet gun, just flew and hit the back of the stage. <laughs> it just went right past me. I did a hundred miles an hour and I had to pick it up and be like, hello. <laughs> and I'm done. <laughs> you, you, I, you. I quite like though, a cunty dressing room when everyone's be like a make country dress, you know when you don't make like three of your mates, yeah, and you do something shit on stage, and then everyone else is like, yeah, "What the fuck yeah, was yeah. that?" Like I like that, but the balance has to be there where everyone has got the ability to take the piss out of everyone. But when there's a bad egg in a dressing room, or there's a few bad eggs, I th I always think that when I go to Scotland and they've been winding each other up for years because they've got a smaller circuit, yeah, and then I pop up to like the Glasgow stand and I'm sat there going, "How is everyone?" And I realise the compare's not talked to the open act for the whole 15 minutes I've been in the room, <laughs> and you're like, "Oh, these cunts hate each other." Do you know what's great as well? This has got to be the most comedian thing ever. Is our circuit's barely back, and what we're looking forward to <laughs> <laughs> is mugging each other off, going, "You know what? I can't wait for Dan." Is the first time someone comes back in the green room and none of us make eye contact. Oh. <laughs> oh, I can That's when I know it'll be bad. Yeah, I can say this now because it's not happening. We, we couldn't say it when he was on the episode a couple of weeks ago. We have Freddie Quinn on, who's a good mate of ours on the couch yeah. a couple of weeks ago. And he couldn't mention it at the time because it was still in the pipeline. But uh, we went for a pint. Me, Freddie, Paul Smith, who hosts Top Water, Paul Blair, who owns it. And we sat around having a drink. And we've been back together five minutes. And that group of lads, we all really love each other and we can't wait to take the piss and get a slam in on one of our mates. And Freddie Quinn goes, <laughs> went, uh, the producers of The Circle have been in touch. They've asked me to go on the show. And Paul Blair went, have they asked you to be The Circle? Right? <laughs> <laughs> and he nearly left six months to not go for a pint with your mates. And that's the first thing that gets said to you. He's like, I might have to go. I can't cope with this. Brilliant. Oh. It's such Welcome a, back. Well, it's such a funny thing to come in. Come in. <laughs> I've never been asked to uh, be on the be on the circle. Cause it, is it a comedian circle or something? Or is it just... No, it was, it's... Do you, do you not know what the show is? It's the social media one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they've okay. now cancelled the show. Completely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Freddie got a sniff and they closed it down. <laughs> <laughs> Shite Midas touch. Yeah. Um, shall we do some... Oh, this is a good one. All right, Lids. Similar to Harry Redknapp from managing to talk show host or flint off becoming Top Gear host, if you had to just flip your career on its head, become equally, if not more famous for some... So this isn't like, what job would you have done if you didn't do stand-up? Mm. You know, this isn't like, I'd have been in a tobacco stroke tools yeah. factory. Um, so you have to become uh, equally, if not more famous for something in a different industry, what would you choose? Magician. And what, <laughs> and what would you choose for the other lives? What do you, Lids, what do you think you would have been... Uh, what good at? What do you think you could have done well? Oh, there was a period with EastEnders where I wanted to be like the love rat guy in EastEnders. You know the, the I can see you absolute as that as well. arsehole. It would just it just be like there'd be ruffled bed sheets behind him, and there'd be just some woman just lying there in a negligee. Or, or sometimes, and then he <laughs> what just fucking be, EastEnders. Can't get, they, they, they EastEnders. Used to late night EastEnders. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but just combing your hair. Just be, I'd love to play like an absolute bastard. And then some people think I already do that. But on television, I'd love to. It must be so much fun to just be like chew up the scenery and be a complete shitbag. Just to be one of those guys that does two seasons of EastEnders, does a murder, fucks off. Yeah, and then gets I, like a... Fo- seasons of EastEnders? There's only been one season no, of EastEnders. No, actually, there's been two. Oh, two. really? Because when they came back after the pandemic, because they had to stop filming for a bit, they called it Series 2 as like a publicity stunt. That's fucking So this hilarious. is technically it's EastEnders clever, Series 2. Very good marketing. No. The first series was 60 years long. <laughs> <laughs> have you... <laughs> <laughs> have you done... Um, have you done any acting? Because I, I imagine... Yeah. You're from the you're from the East End. You you know you what like like, South 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 London. You're from South London. Oh, so, sorry. Of course you are. Sorry, so they, uh, sorry. We get a bit defensive about stuff like that. <laughs> Oi, wrong bit of fucking London. You can't. But he, um, I've done a little bit. But I, I did a, I did a walk on part in. Um, it was sort of slightly more than a walk on part. But Catherine Ryan's Duchess show on Netflix. Yeah, yeah. So I was the, I was the kind of like mute husband of one of the characters in that, and I had to do a little bit of face acting and <laughs> the the eyebrow. Was going. A I bit don't of know. Face acting. Bit of that. You had, to do, you had to do The Rock on Catherine Ryan's sitcom. I had to do, I had to do uh, a bit of it. It's such, it's such a laugh, though. Like, it's, it's like a really, it's a fun thing to do. But I was only in a few scenes. Those days, man, are so long. And just yeah. call, call times at 5 a.m. I can see how you'd lose. Call times at 5 a.m. and you haven't actually got a line. That's a motherfucker, isn't it? Yeah. You've got Are to be you... ready to go with your face acting at any point. You got to remember, that's, everyone's going, oh, you've got to remember your lines. I was thinking, I've got to remember my eyebrow moves. So when she says, I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to go like that. I think you would make a really good QVC fella. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Just like... Does it even exist anymore? I know I'm old, but... Doesn't it? Doesn't Q... No, surely Telly Shop until it exists. Does it really? Next thing you'll be telling me the mint's not on every (laughs) night. QVC is still a thing when... I think you'd selling a product at overpriced. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you can cut this carrot sixteen different ways with this. Chop. Yeah. <laughs> I'd love to. See, he's already <laughs> fucking getting in the carrot. I'd only want to sell the chopper. Chop, chop. Do, do you know what you could be, Dan? Yeah. You could be the tech wizard in a big blockbuster film. You know the guy that's always spinning around laptops and uh, kind of yeah, like taking yeah, yeah, a yeah. thing out and go and just hacks yeah. into. Because I'm wearing phone. glasses, essentially. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because you, you look exactly like that. I right can't now. even do the graphics for the episodes of this. Like I've got no bit. Like, Adam's like, oh shit, I've not got my laptop. Can someone do a graphic? I'm like, I could do. Uh, I could draw it on a piece of paper, <laughs> and I could take it to the. I could take it to Boots and get a photocopy. <laughs> but yeah, I don't think Johnny Lee Miller was that good with computer science, but he was okay in hackers. I think yeah. the main thing. I don't think you have to be able to hack. Yeah, to, to I, I think play acting is acting is very much about. Well, I'm hacking now, like to I'm participate. independent. Uh-huh. What do yeah. you want to do? I'm in the Pentagon. <laughs> I'm in the Pentagon now. Can you ask them to devalidate the parking? <laughs> <laughs> it's done. Free parking. <laughs> Everywhere. Um, I think I'd be a good celebrity chef. Y- yeah, that, yeah, uh, yeah. I can absolutely see that. <laughs> like, you think you'd be a good everything? No, but like specifically. No, no, I, I, I do I do see that on Saturday morning kitchen because eventually they'd realise that they're being like, there weren't enough scousers. Yeah. Oh, they probably are, but they just think we need more scousers. Yeah. Come in, they go, we can't afford the Rimmer guy off Sunday brunch. Yeah. And they go, this guy. And then you'd have a little spin on it where you go like- I'd do oh, street food. I'd that's it. Scouse street food. Yeah. What would your catchphrase be like? You know, like, <laughs> fucking get on that. <laughs> <laughs> or, get, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, that could be it. When you finish your dish, like, you know, like, salt me. Yeah. Like, fuck off. Get on that there, just float up. Yeah, yeah just get on that. Just get on that, lad. God, yeah. have you seen the Saturday kitchen's getting really aggressive <laughs> with that scouser? <laughs> just fucking eat it, you nuts. Oh, is get it? Have they that. got a scouser? But is there a way of doing like. <laughs> Fuck off. Is there a way of doing like scouse street food? Yeah, because there's obviously scouse itself as a dish. You yeah. could just be the scouse guy, all different versions of scouse. Scouse street food. I don't, I, I'm not very good at making scouse though, but I make a really good Cuban sandwich. So Cuban. Why does scouse, what is the thing with scousers in Cuba? I don't, what, is, is there some sort of thing? Is it a place that loads Drugs. of scousers go on holiday? Drugs. Yeah, yeah, Communist. Yeah. Hey, yeah. they love jazz. They, they fucking yeah. love Castro, lad. First time I went to Cuba, I was four. Yeah. And also it gives you a chance to really get your head around, you get your mouth around that. <laughs> <laughs> it nearly got lost. It nearly got left out no, there because Jeff call. was very, very busy trying to be a proper broadcaster. <laughs> yeah. And I can't believe that I, I went. <laughs> no, you're absolutely yeah, right. The cool first there. time I went out when I was four. <laughs> I mean, I didn't go abroad till I was about 19, but apart from Cuba. Oh, I, I, did, was I, I, did, I did go to uh, Gran Canaria when I was four. <laughs> 
Like, yeah, Quebec and Canadian <laughs> summer. Like, oh, I did. I did. Did you? Yeah. And I can't remember most of the holiday, apart from when I fell off my lino and I thought I was going to drown. And I can remember that like it happened earlier today. <laughs> I could <laughs> see my auntie swimming over to me to put me back on my lilo. She was like, you're all right, there you go. She didn't even get you off the water, no? Ah, oh, she <laughs> put me back on my lilo. Just so it could happen again. And well, then you, this, came, this came from Cuban sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> I make a dangle Cuban sandwich. I nearly drowned when I was four. <laughs> Get on that. <laughs> Fuck off. Bread. Cuban shit. Get on that. <laughs> Fuck off. I do. I make a good Cuban. I make a... Uh, what would be Skull Street food, though? Cubans? I just think all, all you go... You <laughs> drill down so hard into Scouse as a dish... And that would be it. All you do is scouse. But I don't make a good scouse. I've tried and it's just, I can't get the consistency. But we also live in an alternative reality where you can do, he was a fucking computer hacker a minute ago. If yeah. he could do that, you no, could make scouse. But he was scouse. an actor, wasn't he? You can, I can act, I can act True. like someone who can make scouse. True. <laughs> but you could have like vegan scouse. You know, like you, these places open up where they just go burger and fries. We have fucking one burger, one fries. And that's it. You open up a scouse restaurant in London. Yeah, boutique yeah. scouse. Yeah. Boutique scouse. So it was ironic. <laughs> oh my God. Have you seen that scouse place? No, my uncle's actually from Liverpool. You've got to go to this place. It's in, amazing. In Hawks, it's I just want a like, chip butty so shop. Yeah. I've always wanted a chip butty shop. Yeah. Uh, made with oven chips. That'll be the real. No, no, that's the thing. You pick your bread, your type of chips and your sauce. Oh my God. It's like Subway, except it's just all different, like crinkle cut French yeah. fries. Or like a toasty bread. You can have 50-50 bread. Can I, a match? Can I have mainly, uh, mainly normal chips, like chunky? But yeah. with a few accidental curlies. And what are you having as the bread? Whoa. Create your own. Yeah. Do whatever you want in my shop. What yeah. bread are you having? What kind of bread? Um, so stodgy. Are you going to have a public toilet there? Because that's going to... Tiger bread. Sliced extra thick. Oof. What sauce? Curry. Heavy. There you go. <laughs> that genuinely sounded good. <laughs> <laughs> and every time you say it, get the fuck out! <laughs> I reckon it's a fuck. I've just told that to the public. Don't steal it. But Can't I think, because think yeah, someone right. did suggest, <laughs> and you, you won't get this reference initially, Jeff, but we can't explain it. Someone has asked me, Sam McGuire it was, has asked me to start a side YouTube show on the side of the Haveway podcast uh, called Draymond's Barbecue Restaurants, where Draymond just cooks some barbecue food. I do a character on sometime. Draymond? No, I don't do a character. Uh, we've, we've got, we had a fellow <laughs> on the podcast yeah, a couple yeah. of times who's from... Uh, Texas. From Texas. He starts white, ends black. <laughs> it's a, it's a bit like he's cooking. Um, <laughs> so, uh, we've got some have a words. That's what we named the podcast that. We should do it, shouldn't we? Should probably do it. Possibly. Probably do it. Uh, no one can hear the music apart from me and everyone else. Finishes though. The whole podcast. Now it's just the final 10%. Get off my fucking buttons, you rat. Have a word. Hi, Draymond Green, Danilo Gallinari, Carl Maloney, and Fintavious Caldwell Pope. Hope one of you get the basketball references. I did not. I need you to have a word with either me or my GF girlfriend. I hate people taking up disabled bays and charging slots just because they're too lazy to walk a few steps or maybe they're in so entitled that they think every Range Rover should come with VIP parking bays. If you've got a fancy car and you've earned it, fair play. But there's a particular Range Rover that always takes up charging bays at the gym. We go at 6am so it's hardly busy and this cunt is parked there every time while I've seen a Tesla sitting in a regular spot. I feel that if my keys were to accidentally get caught in this car's paint job it would just be calmer and if we manage to catch his reaction that would just be the icing on the cake she says it's not my battle to fight and it's criminal damage but i think someone's got to do it there's no cameras watching this space and all the other cars are facing sideways so there's hardly any chance of getting caught by a dash cam probably wouldn't touch the disabled bays because someone could have just forgot their badge and i've seen an absolute <laughs> champ in a wheelchair in there before but unless they do wireless charging for cars now this guy has it coming in. Keep Hi. my name out of your pod for obvious reason. And if there are any lawyers listening, we live in Mozambique. Love the pod. Keep it up, lids. I'm an OG patron and can't wait for the thank you show. I think it's very difficult to feel sorry for anyone who goes to the gym at six o'clock in the morning in a place where the gym has charging bays and has patrons that drive Teslas and Range Rovers. That yeah. was, for me was also the moral dropout moment where he almost used it as an example of this is how bad it's got. Sometimes Teslas have to park in normal bays. Like, yeah. Fucking <laughs> hell. Yeah. This is, this is cancerous. It's very difficult to yeah. be like, do you know what, babe? Yeah. Where are you meant to put your 2019 
I like the amount of I'm mental thinking. energy he's spent on on planning this as well. Yes. he's just gone through it. He's like, you know, it's not the fucking, you know, it's not the uh, the bank job or, or it's not like the diamond heist at the Millennium Dome. You just, you're going to key it, key it. But he's sort yeah. of, very he, articulate. He's, he's, into us to be like, can I key this car? <laughs> he's cased out the joint. No, just do it. Man. There's loads of reasons why I should do it. It's very middle class apart from the key in, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, we go to the gym at 6 a.m. We finish our smoothie and we go together. There's Teslas everywhere. Range Rover's in the wrong bay. It's an absolute nightmare. So I fucking keyed it. I fucking what? hate people who can get up and go straight into exercise, you know. Like, I'd love to be able to be like, right, I'm starting my day with a run. So I'll get up, go for me run, and then I'll crack on with my day. I have to get up and meander through the first three hours of life before I can even <laughs> think about going for the run. Hey. Sometimes just thinking about going for a run in my head <laughs> is enough. as good as going yep. for a run. Yeah. Oh, gosh, that was knackering mentally. <laughs> when the pandemic hit and we lost work and I didn't know we were going to have any money from the yeah. like the podcast, I ran so much like it was spring. That beautiful bit of weather, end of March, April, mm. and the fear, the deep-rooted anxiety of like, how am I going to pay this mortgage and feed my family? This was before any government uh, help was coming through. I didn't know you could pause your mortgage at this point. I just thought we were fucked. Oh, I jogged. I jogged through that exact first thing, just woke up like, oh my God, we're going to lose the house and just went running. Yeah. But apart from that, yeah, morning running is a motherfucker. The, the good thing about morning exercise is the fry-up you can have, like the morally pure fry-up. If I'm uh, staying at a hotel, yeah. I'd do this because it's very easy just to get from the room in a nice air-conditioned sort of ex-fitness room, as they call it, and just knowing. I mean, what what I exercise versus what I put in my body. I mean, it's like <laughs> 20 minutes on that's the treadmill. seven calories. That's yeah. eight rushes of bacon and four eggs. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever done that when you do like the Dubai trips overseas and stuff? It just... just I, I don't do the exercise. You, you just go straight When I do the Dubai trips overseas, in my head, I'm on holiday. Yeah. And of a night, I just have to do a gig for a bit. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You having pina coladas? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hunt, like, I'll have a beer with me, with me lunch and me breakfast stuff. Yeah. We, I'm on uh, holiday in that. Dubai. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In your head, you're like, I'm in the, I'm in the Middle East. It's sweaty. I'm burning more calories just through waddling around the fucking <laughs> hotel. And the the breakfast, the buffet at the at the hotels in like Dubai and Bahrain. Where where did we go and do an army gig? Did we go and do? Uh, we, we went. We were in Cyprus together. Cyprus sporting our brave boys and girls overseas. Um, yeah. in Cyprus, it's for the troops. We. Oh my god, you I, were such a lovely housemate for that well, week. I was, but I wondered if you remember this, right? Well, I did the most childish thing once. We we decided to play cricket on the garage thing and you were evidently a lot better at just hitting balls further than me and it was pissing me off so I, I sort of then said I said uh, what what if we sort of have a structure whereby it's like a test match where I don't know technically you could bat out for a draw right so <laughs> and we did we, we, we did we did two innings each of this we got, got all the rules here so oh, we're both well, I think we're both in our 30s at this point yeah and um, and then I basically blocked fucking ages sun going down and we, like I batted out the overs and I think Dan hadn't fully understood just how petty I was at this point. And I was like, okay, I fold my bat up. I go, you know, shake hands. It was a draw. And like, we were both really cross with each other for like a couple of hours. So we got on. It was such a great trip. But I had to belatedly apologise. for. I think it's one of the most petty things I've ever I've done. I've never bat out for had more respect for you or yeah. any other guest we've ever had on this show than that. That is true. I have totally yeah. forgotten that. Do you remember that? I, yeah, I remember in front of the... There was like a garage thing. Garage, and you were whacking balls over. I couldn't even get the... I, I'm shit... I love cricket, but I'm shit at it. So I just thought, I'm going to just show like sort of... Not interested. Yeah. Not interested. I was, sh I was shouldering arms in a fucking garage game of cricket. Just watching it go yeah. by. <laughs> <laughs> Waiting. I was sort of stopping runs with an imaginary second batsman. Oh, that's phenomenal. Just staying in a house while you were doing... That was, that, that was the ultimate. Like, you were there for a week. Yeah. You pretty much do a gig every night. I think we might have got a day or two off. We did. Yeah. You had some writing to do. You were working quite hard that time. We weren't on it all the time. But you were in a villa with a mate. The weather was delightful. October. Was, you got per diems. Yeah. So you just got money thrown at you. And then at like five o'clock every day, you'd be like, oh, cunt. We're I mean, we've not been, on we've... holiday, are we? There's a reason you're here. And then they'd like, Georgina would turn up in a car like, are you ready? And be like, oh, I don't want to be ready. Ruined it. I know. The actual work ruined what had been a cracking holiday. We, be we benefited from war, basically. Yeah. Didn't we? I mean, indirectly, we had a right touch with that. Yeah. And there was this weird situation where <laughs> a lot of comedians, you know, be keeping an eye on news, peace talks in Afghanistan. They'd be like, fuck it. 
Yeah. It's quite a nice game. I actually had a... Co- <laughs> I, I, yeah. <laughs> Apparently we're uh, pulling troops out of Afghanistan. Oh. Yeah, like, you don't want to do it too quick, do you know what I mean? Just <laughs> well, and uh, everyone like quietly going, Iran's a problem though, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> you should probably think about Iran at some point, shouldn't we? And, and, then, when, and then when Syria happened, they would go, it's, it's mainly an air thing. And then you're like, oh... But they'll be taking off from Cyprus. You're going, well, oh, look, you know, that <laughs> it's commutable in a way. I mean, I th- those gigs were, I say that they, they could be tough with the troops, but fuck me. If you had a good gig with that, it, they were so nice and so appreciative because they were just, they were decompression gigs, right? So yeah, these, yeah. these lads and, and last, I mean, mainly blokes, they were coming back. They'd done like six months and, and they just had one day in Cyprus to decompress from the government, which is like, Fucking, what's that going to do? Um, but they did find it beneficial. And then you did the show in the evening and they would have music. Because we don't normally work with musicians, do we? No. And that musicians was, were always sound. And that was fun. However, there were some epic stories of when, like, if you did a gig for the Paras, um, like, they didn't fuck about. Like, the Marines were one thing, but the Paras were something else. And there was a couple of comics where the Paras had agreed beforehand. It's like 250 regiments strong of, like, right, no one laughs at the comedian uh, or even responds to anything. And if they do, they have to pay for the bowl night. And just imagine dying that way, where just no one will respond to you, or something. So the so the paras were the absolute extreme that I never I never got any paras. But no, they, I didn't. but the the stories people retell, mm. like oh you doing the decompression gigs, oh you go in Cyprus, oh yeah, did you hear about the yeah. paras? Someone said this, and they got a fucking dick in their ear, like it was that. <laughs> yeah, bad. that did and I got yeah. the first night. You you I've been doing stand up ten years at this point when I yeah. did the first one. Totally can handle it. Got there, I was like, oh, God. Oh, this is nervy. And my first night was nearly all medics. It was all oh, just it was like a class. load yeah, of yeah. middle class. And there was loads of beautiful women. No one's been boozing for six months. They've been in the sun. They just look amazing. Yeah. And they were just like so friendly. And I was like, this is easy. This is absolutely easy. The next night was all just like me, army. Me, and yes, they were yeah. fuming. Yes. And then and then there'd be the other weird one where they put yeah, it in, they used to, they put it in the cinema truck and they'd be like it's like the six people so it's like feast or famine it was either yeah, mental you did or- really well that night but I remember like just the the, the sort of sense um, of of aggression in the room and it, sometimes I mean the stories particularly when they could just drink as much as they want there was a story of one comic that was on stage and, and every once in a while this used to be the case if a comic couldn't control a room or get their attention they would just take all their clothes off right so this comic did that and then to a bunch of army guys they were like alright and then they all did it too <laughs> you just sit there 250 penises in front of you you've gone okay I think, I think I'm out of my playbook now that's that's <laughs> oh yeah and just having to walk off you can't go trip. back into my no. like that stage can you <laughs> yeah. you can't also you can't when it, when yeah. you hear naked bar from the marines or whatever yeah. and they all come running down naked yes you can't there's no you can't do banter like because if it was normal gig you'd be like why has this guy got his dick out yeah but everyone in the room's like yeah because they've called naked bar that's why they've got the dick out so as a comic you're powerless you have to just be like yep. there's nothing you could do that's funny they were windmilling what, behind the, me and this guy had an absolute specimen yeah and i was like that is genuinely not far of a helicopter john yeah. and there was a as john barryman <laughs> and there was a guy next to him with a small dick who was doing an attempted and it was just a small dick sort Hand of like, fun. yeah Aww. just flapping from side to side just twatting off each thigh but he was like, I'm doing it as well. I was like, bless him. <laughs> Good on you. But you can't go, what the fuck? Because everyone's like, well, it's because it's naked bar. What are you, why are you? Obviously, they're naked. I mean, these stories are, this is the thing about comedy. We're just going, yeah, they called naked bar in a very casual way. I mean, that is, there's something about what happened there that I think if like a very, a much younger millennial or Gen Z is listening to that, we'll think, are oh, these like with their war stories from 20 years ago? This was in the recent past, I think I should say. This wasn't like that fucking long ago, no. you know? Yeah. We used to have like, um, they used to have like uh, dancing girls as well on the show. It was fucking great. It was great. And I know, and, and, but the girls that did those dancing shows. As now, you, that was a different time. Yeah, that was a different yeah, yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. But the girls that did those shows, one had to be great at dancing, but also they were really resilient. First up, they, they're like, yeah, I want to go to a war zone. They were just really confident and stuff like that. They were great to work with. But what happened inevitably was people would say, well, we know where's the male eye candy, right? And fair enough, you know, there were some female uh, uh, soldiers and stuff there. So they got they got in this like uh, break dancer lad to come out oh, and dear. do like B-boy moves and stuff. But it, apparently it was just really, even for the women who'd asked for it, it was really weird because he come out all oiled up and he's like, but uh, but uh, right? <laughs> he's bought the whole show and he's like doing windmills on his back with all this oil flying off of him. They're going, all right, I think I see why it's mainly female dancers yeah. now. That's just a strange thing to happen in the desert. Yeah, I thought I had a tough gig. Yeah. Um, one more. Should we do one more? Have one a word? More. Do one more. Uh, mates have got new girlfriends. Hi, I could really do with some expert advice. My two best mates 
Both got girlfriends during lockdown. We're all 18 and this is their first relationship for both of them. So I was happy for them at first. However, now that the pubs are back open, their true colours are starting to show. He's so annoyed. <laughs> it's harder to arrange a night out now. And whenever we go out, it will almost always end with one of them storming off over the slightest problem to go and cry in a car park. This would never have happened before. The only thing that's changed in both of their lives is the addition of a significant other. I've always seen this trend in behavior with some of my less close friends. Do I call them out or will they eventually pull themselves together as this is their first relationship for both of them? Since I've never had a girlfriend, I don't think I'm qualified to comment on their behavior. So could you have a word <laughs> with my mates or could you have a word maybe even with me? Keep up the good work. And that's from Anonymous. 18 years old. There's bitches and a First friend's girlfriend, group. especially like if the other one's never had a girlfriend, I'm gonna just go out on a wild limb and say that these might be quite three, three quite shy lads. Do you know right. what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I love the way that he held back that detail from the end there. Basically, at the end there, he said, "I don't really have a position to judge here." Because he's never had a girlfriend. He could possibly say <laughs> all this stuff. And also, the way that he said, oh, now they're showing their true colours. What, they want to have sex? That's, you know, that's quite a reasonable colour, a true colour to show. I think that what, yeah. what he's saying is the girls are being a bit sort of, you're not going out, you're spending time with me. When they yeah. are out, the girls are doing the typical sort of well, I don't know. girlfriend. I don't know. I don't think he's real. That didn't seem to me like he was laying the blame on the girlfriends. That seemed like he was going... These two, now they've got girlfriends, mm. are being fannies. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, mean. You know, he's, and he's right to hold them accountable for their behaviour. I think one of the things when you, had, when you see a mate, I remember that when you was young, he was about 18, your first mate was really into a girl. I always remember that hilarious moment when they turn up at the pub and she styled him. That was a brilliant <laughs> moment. Do you remember like... <laughs> How, what the fuck do you smell of, Paul? Exa exactly. Like he's wearing Izzy Miyake, he's wearing like a turtleneck and stuff. And like you can tell... <laughs> By the way, by the way, he comes in the pub. He knows it ain't him. He knows it's not who he is. And then everyone's like, "You've been styled, haven't you?" And then they get weirdly defensive. They're going, "No, shut up, Alison's got a really great eye for that." And you're like, "Sorry, you're like great eye. Who the fuck are you now?" Using words like "great eye" is such a and it always used to. It was round, you know, in my era, it was for some reason turtlenecks. Yeah. It's, it's that kind of thing. I think women call, not. You look like you've jumped off the back of a book. <laughs> Yeah, and just a lot of a lot of products and a lot yeah. of swish and a lot of yeah. yeah. And the and the honest answer is not that Alison's got a good eye. It's that I like having sex and she keeps having sex with me. <laughs> yeah, she's just, I've done this because I want to keep having sex with her because I like boobies. That's yeah. basically it. I know. I, I think these chinos look all right. Yeah. They would wear stuff. They There's would... nothing wrong with white denim. <laughs> <laughs> There's everything wrong with white denim. Do you ever have a? Uh... A girlfriend style, yeah? I, no, I didn't have a girlfriend style me, but I was one of the first to girlfriend when my lad, my mates were like, oh, what? Uh. Like, I was like, I don't care. Like, that what is... What's wrong with your friends? Yeah. Oh, just the sort of, like, 18-year-old <laughs> lad. The thing is, this will happen through all of your life. Mm. When you're single and you've got a mate that's single, you're basically enablers, aren't you? Like, you do you want to go? Yeah, of course. Mm. And then the problem is, someone might meet someone. And the way to be a good egg is not to just fire off your single mate as soon as you meet someone. But this shit will happen from now and gradually increasing just the, the seriousness of the relationship, the amount of mates that have got girlfriends, as you get to 21, to yeah. 25, and, and when you crack 30, mm. so many people are coupled your up, your you've just got to out. adapt. Yeah. Your annual night out of your mates. And it's not to say it doesn't happen with women. I mean, I think girls would report that they're probably better at keeping up contact, but then they'll often they'll often get into what the bloke's into. And I've seen this happen with my female friends, where they'll be sitting with their mates, and they're going like, oh, the football's on. And then their friends will be like, the fucking football's on. She's never been in a football. She's got, and, then they'll, they'll, and it's a lovely thing, right? They're getting into what the fella's into, but they, they can get just as absorbed. That's because they want to be in every part of your life. They've got no interest in football. <laughs> They've just got interest in being, no, we do everything together. Yeah, yeah. It's like the best way to plan a revolution is from within. Yeah. Take over the institutions of state and slowly change them. But then you get to that point as well. Like, I'm 44 now and I've got a kid. And then what happens is women start to really, and my wife has never, like, like, like stopped me doing any of that stuff. But they start to feel, they start to be, like, really trying to, get you out of the house and stuff like that she she got me into um because i've been around loads and my 15 years of marriage before that i wasn't around loads so she's like why don't you play cricket <laughs> so she picked the sport that got me out of the house the most <laughs> and i was like oh i can't really do it saturdays too a sport that takes three yeah, days yeah. to play no she meant like she meant like test matches like in antigua i think and she 
<laughs> she was like, do training. And she was absolutely right. Like the moment I did it, it was just something else to think about. But when the, when the pandemic first started and lockdown started, I said to her, because I didn't miss stand up at first, weirdly. And I said, I don't miss it that much, babe. And like her face is like, what? She was really yeah. fucking terrified. And I suddenly thought, oh yeah, I always thought like me being away was for me. But it was also, it was also for her. Oh yeah. yeah. When I Laura realised she couldn't just watch anything she wanted five nights of the week, she yeah. was like, oh God, I can't even my time. I can't even keep up with the Kardashians anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's dead important in a comics relationship to have a Mrs. Who enjoys and doesn't mind that alone time. God, yeah. Uh, really, truly needy ones. They, they might last five years, but eventually they'll be like, no, 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 no. No, no, absolutely. It's, it, I love it. I wouldn't I have a man it. who's home at 6.15 every day. Yeah, my wife, my wife's still still really amused by me just going on an absolute bender. You know what I mean? She thinks it's like she thinks she doesn't think it's cool, but like the other night I was I was having a drink. I forgot to I forgot to tell her that I was on my way home. I just came home, didn't text or anything like that. But the next day she was like, "You didn't text me," but she looks sort of semi amused by it. She's yeah. like, "Oh, he yeah. still got it." Try that five times in a row. Well, and see how that go. I mean, oh, you didn't text. But you notice what I called a bender, Dan, was one night out <laughs> where, where I, I actually I actually made the last train as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Absolutely. fucking great night, yeah. lads. I'm really enjoying it. Anyway, yeah. Um, the 10:45 is about to. If leave. you're 18 and your mates are hooking up and you feel a little bit left behind, you're 18 and just you won't have to wait that long until like oh, just fuck me off. Like it's not going to be forever, is it? Chances yeah. are at 18, it's not that you've not lost them for good. Yeah, just, and all, they'll yeah. be back. There's a chance that, like, I'm not saying he is. We don't know what he looks like, but he could be a bit dweeby, and maybe the girls haven't gotten near him yet. But I'm telling you, come 18, 19, girls get desperate too, and someone will fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> well, that is the, that <laughs> is so no bleak. no. I, I'm completely. Uh, the barrel will empty out. You'll be with other dregs. Yeah. <laughs> they enjoy. I, no, it, it happens. I think I think with, with, with women, certainly as they get to a certain age. You remember, like Brexit negotiations. Yeah. Where suddenly compromises started getting made. Yeah. And that's that's when once they get to a point where they were go, all right, fuck, yeah, fish, whatever. I don't give a fuck. You fi- <laughs> yeah, you it fish. needs to happen. Time's yeah, ticking. Le- yeah, financial equivalence. Fuck it, let's just, just do let's just do a deal here. Yeah. And so, you know, no, it's, it's worth it's worth hanging on in there. But there's a, there's one cliche about like men and women that I find increasingly women often say, Well, it's all right for a bloke, isn't it, in relationships whereby he could if he splits up, he can just he can just hook up with a nice young woman. And I was thinking, do you know how young women look at like blokes like me now. I think it's one of the biggest cliches about men and women is that men can just get back in the game with a hot young woman. I'm like, fuck that. They just look through me in the same way oh, yeah. that it happens the other way, but I just don't fucking moan about it. You're a dad. I'm a dad. That's how, I feel like that's that. how they're supposed to look at me. Yeah. yeah. If I was, the only way I could get with like a, a 21 year old woman is if I was super famous or super wealthy. For the average bloke is, is exactly the same as it is for women. Yeah, what the the things you do well shouldn't re- be a weird twenty one year old that looked at me and went, "Oh my god, he's he keeps a lovely lawn," he, yeah. you know. <laughs> and also, if if a twenty one year old did feel that way about you, you'd go, "All right, loves, if everything been all right," and then just begin, <laughs> you, you give her the name of a counselor and just just say, "Look, I, I know some great people. There's some brilliant medication out there. <laughs> yeah. Just take the first step." I'm going foreign if I uh, post divorce. Yeah, How foreign? Mr. Dan, Mr. Dan, Welsh, Welsh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Would you actually go for it? Think you got more chance with a foreigner because you want to be the exotic guy. He got on grass. You can't be. <laughs> you can't be exotic in Britain. So you're going to have to go somewhere else. Vietnam. Vietnam. Yep. Yeah. You'd be very magical in Vietnam. I yeah. think. Yeah. 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 Shiny. He a hacker. Bright face. He man. got a laptop. <laughs> <laughs> I've taken that too far. <laughs> I know I've taken it too far. We I, 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 full of I, just, I just looked in the eyes of some of my much respected colleagues and everyone was like, really, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this has been quite a considered I think, one. I think uh, if I wanted to be a delicacy, I would go... Why are you looking at me like that? I just saw you as a big pudding then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think like... Um, you got to go somewhere where you're just so different from everyone around. Right. <laughs> so. so it's not Albania. Albania. <laughs> 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 I was thinking like Morocco. Ipswich. No. <laughs> not that different. Yeah. You've all got the old Oh, you are not. You're Moroccan hairy. <laughs> Look at you. He could be a bit Moroccan, You'd couldn't he? You'd have to go like African, wouldn't you? 
Yeah, but Morocco is Africa. No, like, I mean... I mean... You mean African, African? <laughs> Down more. Down more. Yeah. <laughs> Down more. We've got... <laughs> Where's that? <laughs> Get a map up, do it yourself. <laughs> Down, Down more. Africa. Actually, no, up more. Yeah, Down more. more. Murph control gig there. <laughs> Lovely. More yeah, but more. I can't go to, like, Iceland, can I? Do you know what I mean? You don't look, Why? You, you don't look Icelandic in any possible no, way. No, but, like, I'm... Do you know what I mean? What? I'm just, like, a fatter, darker version of what they've already got. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? You look more Moroccan than you do Icelandic. Yeah. Oh, I don't, no, I don't, I'd I don't. struggle to think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. You don't look Nordic in any fucking way, no. and you do, your eyebrows look at least 60% Muslim. <laughs> you reckon? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's got it. I don't know where I could, I, I, need to I find it difficult to go somewhere and be exotic. Exotic, I, I, yeah, I don't know where. Yeah, you've got a little bit like a, if you, you know, like a bit Greek or. Well, you know was, I mean? my 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 mum who was a um, she she was she weren't an I can always say orphan. She weren't an orphan. Her mum gave up for kids, but there was a, a side of her family that we never knew. But I think one of her relatives was from Gozo. Who's Gozo? I just I, I, I forgot. I thought Ghostbusters. Then <laughs> is there's a thing, Gozo that goes there. There's a place called Gozo, isn't there? An island off Malta. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but, but I am thinking of that. I'm like, I'm, I'm thinking about Ghostbusters I'm, right I'm now. I'm half Ghostarian. from the Ghostbusters. Yeah, I'm half Ghostarian. I don't just concrete and red yeah, it's eyes. an island in the Mediterranean Sea. There you go. There you, there you go. go. So I've got a bit of that going on. He's a fucking yeah, ghost. They speak, they speak Maltese. So yeah, Malta. Yeah. They, there you go. So I've got, you know. You're a Malteser? Ex- ex- yeah, you yeah. know, I, I could, I could put, I, so, I say that, like I, I often thought, you know, I reckon if I go to like, Spain, Italy and all that, they might go, well, he's one of our own. It's not really happened. I think that there's Englishness is so so much more powerful than just having a slightly dark. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Just this, Antarctica? whatever this is. I use me Anta- Antarctica again. Use your in, in to Antarctica. meet to meet a wife. You're going to Antarctica. <laughs> not the green one. He's yeah. gonna fuck a penguin. <laughs> there's I, a bit. There's a. I bit. think when we're fucking penguins, it's usually in and around the end of the episode, isn't it? That when is, we get to penguin fucking, you know we're wrapping up. Yeah. That is a BBC free format though. <laughs> yeah, Scouser yeah. finds a wife in Antarctica. <laughs> <laughs> what? It's Monday and Adam is at Liverpool Airport. <laughs> 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 yeah, I don't know what I'm going to find out there, but I love fishing. I think she can't. Oh, God. Uh, Jeff, thanks so much for uh, coming on. Where can we find you? You can find the book, Where Did I Go Right, How the Left Lost Me. You can get it on Amazon. Uh, you can get it on, on Waterstones. And the thing is, and I say this genuinely, if your thing is, oh, I don't want to have a book that's politically indoctrinated, it's not like that. A lot of it is, but well, I basically had two mental parents, so quite a bit of it is, is stories like that. And, and, and you know, I, I grew up you know, in council states, and, and one thing about this country is that if that happened to you, you've probably got a relatively similar experience of, of life. You know, I didn't eat an olive till I was 25, and I don't think that that is... I mean, that's not like a whole chapter. That sounds like a shit book, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> the first time I tried an olive was in a uh, Carluccio's. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, if people are interested by the political um, dimension of it, and, you know... Um, I got to go on a wank it went, went a bit like Childline at the end there. oh it's, it's tricky get our kid with a massive check yeah it's tricky <laughs> I didn't have an olive till I was 25 <laughs> by the book I like olives now that was the worst fucking sales <laughs> thing Wait, uh, I had two mental parents didn't eat olives till I was 25 please buy it <laughs> Two parents. Must and be nice. social yeah. media. What are you? Social media. Uh, Jeff Norcott. Uh, trying to do Instagram. So shit at Instagram. It's worth following just to see how a middle aged straight bloke, <laughs> how bad he can be at Instagram. <laughs> I posted a video the other day, fucking banging content of my, one of my dog's OCDs. So there's more content like that on his way. I right, like it. Is that us? Have we got anything to do, Bog? Um, yeah, we've got a big announcement for the Patreon coming up, haven't we? Which is exciting. Sign oh, up at patreon.com got... slash have a word pod. Oh, like it's going to be our biggest Patreon bonus thing ever, I think. that I think It's going to be, be mental. That's thing, exciting. Yeah. Sign up. Follow me on all socials at Dan Has a Podcast. I'm Adam Rowe Comedian on both Instagram and TikTok and Adam Rowe Comedy on Twitter. Go ahead. <laughs>